Yes, good morning, everybody. It is a live Tuesday morning show. You know, the team have got this idea that they think it's a really clever plan for me to um, to have a surprise guest on a Tuesday morning. So this is what we do now is I, I come in and then they have to play like hide and seek and they have to put the guest in another room and then I have to come in and they pretend there's nothing going on. And I have to go, oh, I don't know how this is going to work out. What's right. going to happen? Yeah, so, wow, it's so much fun. It's unbelievable. No, no, no. By, by team, he means me. Uh, I yeah. came up with that idea. Right. Sorry, Irina. I'm stealing all that shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Own it. So, no, no. But like, yeah. I like a surprise, though. I really do. I like a surprise. No, no, it keeps it intriguing. Our, our, our audience had to guess. You have to guess. Yeah. yeah like, and then the conversation sure. will flow from there. Let's see where this goes. 100%. But uh, like, if you had guesses, who would you like to meet in the world? Well, they're about, to, they're about to bring them in. But uh, comment here from Sugar Shabalala. I kid you not. Sugar Shabalala says good morning. So that's made my morning already. <laughs> if Sugar Shabalala was the surprise guest, I'd be thrilled. Right. Bring bring them in, Ryan. Here's the ba -ba great drum roll. Dum -da -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh. Brother, how are you doing, man? Wow! Where do I sit? What a exactly. what a fantastic surprise guest! You guys are working overtime to bring in the real quality, huh? Dude, how the hell are you? So nice to see you. Where do I plug these in? Yeah, give me the give me the cable. I knew you'd have your own cans. Uh, You're yeah. welcome, Gary. Uh, that's <laughs> that's perfect. There we go. I'll keep this for you because you're gonna need this later. DJ Fresh, everybody. What a what a fantastic surprise! You just made my whole week. You know that. I'm happy to hear that. Bro. Yeah. Um, I have a little less what do you uh, need juice there? in my cans. Turn this one down a little uh, bit. There. There. Perfect, good. perfect. Yeah, we're going deaf in our old age, hey? Not even. I think, I think <laughs> of all the DJs I've DJed next to and with, I'm the one who's actually the most anal about turn the fuck down. Right. I don't want to be deaf. You don't want the monitors too loud either? I, I don't want the monitors yeah. too I mean, when, when I DJ with Euphonic, we fight over the, the monitor levels. Because he wants them Listen, at full can, blast. Can I just say how well he's doing since you brought his name up? He's fucking kicking ass. This man ass. is cleaning up. Yeah. He's in. He, he's basically living in Ibiza now and Miami. In fact, so the right? pa the past three four months, yeah. the, the travel schedule was three weeks away, a week back home. Jeez. But once the summer in the north is in full swing, he literally relocates for three months. So he's gone for three months. Amazing. His kids will see him on Zoom or something. He'll zoom his kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love that. There's a, there's a bit of poetic justice in there. You know, in South Africa, we, we sometimes treat people very badly. Yeah. And then when they yeah. go away and they become huge successes, uh, they become massive international DJs. They become princesses of Monaco. They become Hollywood actors and actresses. They become massive TV stars. And then we go, oh, I can't believe these people leave South Africa. Right? <laughs> and then Nanti Mutato shows up. Yeah, and goes, can we get you back? Congratulations. Yeah, what a lot of nonsense. <laughs> you know? The, the only time they'll ever give you attention at um, Arts and Culture is if you die or if yeah, you export yourself. Give you a funeral. Do you think you'll... <laughs> by the way, have you ever thought about whether you'll get a special state official real, funeral? Or... funeral? In fact, the other day, when I remember when they were laying um, AKA to rest at Heroes Acre. I was thinking, I don't know a single radio person at Heroes Acre. What, yeah. what, are, what are we? No, like, are we, are we we're like I don't think paste. there is anyone. I don't think there's anybody. They don't put... Uh, they don't, they don't put, care about us. They don't put the likes of us in there. But you know what the problem is, though? That radio generally, I feel, keeps society together more than any pop star or politician. <laughs> but they'll never put us at Heroes Acre. So someone sent me a clip of you, and yeah. I, I really don't want this to turn into a me and you, like being retrospective thing because i know we got new stuff going on and both of us want to talk about that more than we want the past but i yes, saw sir. this clip of you um i think it was on cs's show where you were talking about how when you google mm. or you chat gpt the most uh, influential, influential radio people, people in radio, south africa like it, we keep coming up even uh, though yeah. neither of us have been on radio for a long ass time i've been off for almost three years i won, right. won two awards in the process while there we I was go off. you see um, you won two awards in radio while you weren't even on radio <laughs> Uh, Reedy shows up, oh, uh, John man. Robbie shows up. But I think it's, 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 it sadly shows you that South African radio management are doing nothing to groom the next household name from mm. radio. There are no household names. Coming well, so someone asked me um, yesterday, I, I was actually asked to fill in a, a, a question session with a, a woman who's doing a thesis. Yeah. Um, and I'll just pull it up quickly because she asked about exactly this, right? And I, I think it might be interesting to some people because I've often had people ask these questions and then 
I go, oh, well, go and, go and read what I wrote. And they never do, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, here I, I wrote to her. Let me just find this thing. Oh, she yeah, said, beautiful new studios, by the way. Thanks, dude. Yeah, we're yeah. settling in here nicely. So um, I said, she said here, uh, here, has your career as a radio personality been impacted by cancel culture? If so, how? Mm. So I said, no, I got out of radio before that nonsense started, <laughs> which is true. Like, because yeah, in yeah. 2014. It's like you knew. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, often, you know, people say to me, how, how did you kind of time it? And I, I didn't accept I knew that I was going to get fired at some point, right? Do we you, always were going to get fired. Do you know that point. the radio we were doing at 5FM 14 years ago wouldn't cut it right now? No, we'd be in huge trouble. We, we'd be at the BCC the every show week. Be, yeah. Um, yeah. We have so many George Bezos out there. Someone would yes. be complaining on yes. behalf of someone yes. else. Correct. We, we, we just, it's, 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 it's wild what's happening out, out, outside now. So I said, there are very few radio broadcasters, to your point, who say anything thing noteworthy anymore yeah it's not in their interest or in the interest of the radio station for them to say anything except the blandest observations about music or weather mm -hmm. those who have been cancelled very often become rehabilitated not because they did anything wrong in the first place but because society has a short attention span and trends change as quickly as underwear mm -hmm. for example the gap between gay activists in the 90s and trans activists in 23 is enormous and the two groups have nothing in common the first step for anyone who's been cancelled is, if they believe they have a point to make, to never apologize. Yeah. Right? Do you agree yeah. with that? You know what? Um, so I was in Mafiking yesterday. Oh, by the way, I got back at four this morning. Jeez, um, because you I came need, here. I needed to be here. Thanks, so, dude. Wow. Um, Isn't that great? Isn't it terrific? <laughs> but sto story for I've literally been on, been on the road for the last five days. Mm -hmm. So I haven't slept at home in five days. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, story for another day. And um, so I was doing an interview at uh, Mafiking FM. And they were asking me, why did I not apologize to Metro FM management? Because had I apologized, I wouldn't have been fired. And I told them it was, a, you know, a matter of principle. Yeah. I felt they were wrong. I didn't feel I did anything wrong. Right. The case at the BCCSA was thrown out. So why am I apologizing? Yeah. And I'd been taken off air for a month and a month's pay had been docked. So I've been punished already. Why am I apologizing? And besides all of that, those are yeah. not the qu quality of people you should ever find yourself scraping and bowing to. Absolutely. So for me, it was literally a matter these are, of principle. These are people I'm, who I guarantee you yeah. consider to be, in terms of courage, your inferiors. Yeah. And in terms of their ability to do anything to do with radio, your inferiors as well. So why should you go begging them? Please? Absolutely. Yeah. It would, be, it would be demeaning to you. You know what the problem is? Because a lot of us feel we ought to sing for our dinner or our lunch. Mm. A lot of people always grovel and go back with their tails yeah. between their legs because it's, you know, it's politics of the stomach. Well, that's again why, I mean, I have the world of respect for you yeah. and maybe people like DJ Spoo and other people in, mm. in, who, who are really the kind of people who've gone ahead and done their own thing afterwards. But as for the rest, these people who keep moving from station to station, hoping to just get enough together to pay their mortgage. I'm like, well... And, and, and I understand it. I mean, I get it. Right? I get it fully, but you're also doing it within a thankless industry because come February, March, they might decide we don't like you anymore. Or my yeah. grand, oh, yeah. my <clears throat> grand thinks you suck. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to use any scientific yeah. um, reasoning to remove you from the show. I'm not going to even say to you, listen, we gave you all the tools you need to, to perform optimally and yeah. you failed. So we're going to give the show to someone else. So, well, so I think just generally radio management up to bullshit. Wasn't it also like the situation always that if you got great ratings, they would take the credit, oh, and yes, if you got yes. terrible ratings, you would you would get the blame. I almost felt like, <laughs> am I in a soccer team here? <laughs> because because in soccer, if there's a fuck up, the coach goes. Yeah. In right. radio, yeah. the star striker goes. <laughs> if there's a fuck up, how does that make sense? <laughs> but but how are you doing? Because you went through some serious shit, yeah. man. I mean, yeah. like, I can say that my episode with with Mnet on Idols was was a trial, and it was. I mean, yeah. we actually went to court. Sure. And it was a horrible experience for me. And I'm not the kind of person who sits there and wails about these mm -hmm. things for long. You know that. But it was it was easily like the lowest, right? And for you. They went, it was a lot more personal. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was like, it was, it was nefarious. Yeah. It turned out all to be bullshit. And, and there were people who hated you, who jumped to conclusions immediately. In fact, um, we, we often chat with Euphonic about how the fact that we went through what we went through, but were not once even half suicidal, means we're either psycho <laughs> or we knew that 
ultimately the truth is the truth is the truth. And and I, I firmly believe if you you know yeah. if 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 you off yourself, how do you clear your name when you're dead? You know, and 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 for some it might even be an admission of guilt. But not once, even through the shit we we're going through, yeah. did we feel like war was me. It was literally um, like Churchill says, when you're going through hell, keep going. You know, there's nothing to see. Why are you stopping to look around if you're going through hell? And and yes, it was traumatic. And also, obviously, you this family that you have to deal with. Sure. And it's also finding out how orchestrated something is. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for those that missed it, um, the way this thing started, um, this woman tweeted about, well, antiphonic about three years ago. And he ignored it. It didn't. You know, there was no traction. And then she did it again a year later, but threw me in the street. So then the way it was orchestrated was, how do we make sure we support this woman that this can stick? Hmm. Hence, now there's all of a sudden anonymous accounts saying, oh, yes. I mean, Flip, you were accused of... Um, well, there was a 15, supposedly a 15 year old who got a drink from me once in a club night, and then I turned into a rapist overnight. Like I said, I mean, you've yeah. been, you, you've great. been through it yourself. That's great. So, yeah. so, so I think a lot of it was, how do we corroborate what this woman said, that it gives her case, um, a chance in hell. But, but who would be, I mean, I know that there, there were, at the time that I had my issues with, yeah. uh, with Mnet, it was, very, it was a very convenient story. Because mm-hmm. anytime mm-hmm. you can bring up race or sex in yes. South Africa, yeah. you can distract people from mm-hmm. what's really mm-hmm. going on. And this was the time of Bell Pottinger and all the rest of it. Yeah. And while I was probably mostly unaware of this stuff, Rena, who works with me, was like, there's a, there's a certain number of counts that are pushing this. It's orchestrated. Right? I'm telling you right now. Dude, I've got a, pr- a private investigator. Okay. So we know who some of the ring leaders, as it were, um, are. We know who was pushing what agenda, so that this case here then gets a, a, a you know a chance in hell. And I remember when we had a conversation with the prime media management, we told them this is bullshit. And if you guys are gonna be scared of the mob, the mm-hmm. Twitter mob, mm-hmm. um, it's unfortunate because this thing will be thrown out. Um, if this thing goes to the NPA, it'll be thrown out. It went to the NPA twice, it was thrown out. Right. Now it's us taking it to court because we're like, fuck you. You're not going right. to get away with this. No. So it will go to court, but on our terms. You know what I mean? Damn right. And, and, and a lot of people are like, why don't you just let it go if you're not guilty? I'm like, um, when you've lost 10, 000, I mean, a 10 million rand of business, Absolutely. you let nothing go. And, and I think people mm-hmm. take things lightly that don't affect them. It's easy for you to say, let it go, let it go. If you're not guilty, let it go. And I'm like, no, nah, fuck you. You, you. you can let it go, but we're not going to let Absolutely. it go. Yeah. And you also very quickly figure out how you, who your real friends are. Because eh? people, people run. They run a mile away the minute there's some controversy. And I'm talking about business relationships. Yeah. I'm talking about personal relationships, yeah. long-time friendships. Some Dude, of these people just... People whom you know for a fact you helped build million rand um, <laughs> um, 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 empires in entertainment. Right. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, okay, I thought this person would have called to see, do your kids have food? I mean, just something as simple as that. Are you okay? Yeah. And you realize that, geez, okay, maybe only five to 10 people actually give a fuck about um, your well-being. Everyone else, to everyone else, you're a means to an end. And as long as you can't be used as a means to an end, then why should they pick up the phone and call you? So I think you quickly realized whom is for you and who isn't. There's a saying, not everyone in your um, circle is in your corner. Damn right. You know, so you, you learn that very fast. Yeah. And, learn and that very fast. Doesn't it piss you off also <clears throat> that you did, you know, 20,000 hours of radio probably yeah. by now. Mm-hmm. And most of that stuff was the most fun, uplifting, positive, yeah. entertaining, crazy, stupid, hilarious thing. And what, you, what you're going to have people, a lot of people will remember is mm. just those things that they thought were controversial through uh, your career. Uh, absolutely. It's so frustrating because you and I both had this idea years ago. Mm. And I mean, we could talk about it now because it's hardly like it was a strategy, but we both wanted to go to a youth station at the same time to start changing the way things were because mm. we realized like we were p- products of a generation yeah. and those coming yeah. after us, products of a generation that weren't interested in the baggage of the past. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you do afternoons, I do mornings. 
And we, we made a fun thing of that where we would try to take the country in a very positive direction. And it wasn't like we were being paid to do that. Yeah. We were being paid yeah. just to do interesting radio shows. Yeah, absolutely. But I think we both had an idea that that was the philosophy guiding us. And, and, and you know, I think because... Uh, I mean, between, it's Mandela Day today. I don't see very much hype about that anymore, right? I think we squandered all of that goodwill amongst ourselves and, hmm. you know, within the international community. You, you know what it is, though? And, and I think, and it's something I discussed on CSS podcast, that the very few people that will do a radio show with a team and everyone in the team kicks ass because everyone in the team is allowed to kick ass. Right. Uh, most radio hosts <clears throat> are very me-centric, that I am Bruce Lee and you are Bolo and you're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nice reference. <laughs> you know, so, so, yeah. so I think, uh, you know, myself and uh, Gareth are from um, a school of your show is only as good as the weakest link. And if you don't allow yeah. people to thrive and to fly, then your show is as good as the weakest person is bad. You know, so I, I think between me and you, that's why we've had teams that work. Well, all those people were and remain like important people in my life. They weren't just people who worked on the show with us. Yeah. And I stay in touch with all of them, right? Absolutely. And it was like that with our audience, mm, it, mm. which is why I still have people coming up to me, what, nine years later and saying, hey, I used to listen to you on the way into school in the morning. Then I feel old. <laughs> and it goes back to the conversation I had with, uh, with CS mm. about the fact that, unfortunately, because people are not making radio that's impactful anymore, that's of, I don't know, that means anything to your average audience member. Mm. That is why radio is not creating household names anymore. And that's why people are so nostalgic. Yeah. That's why people hang on to, I remember when Gareth was on breakfast and you were doing the fresh drive in the afternoons. Right. Um, because we love radio so much we gave radio everything yeah. i mean i'd leave my radio show and i'd be tired because i gave it everything yeah and 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 you know guys saunter into studio five minutes but, before but the show speaking about being tired yeah. i mean you you just you just told me now you've hardly had any sleep this weekend you haven't been home the whole week because you've been working yeah you're still doing gigs you're 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 doing all of it dude how do you get this energy together because i wake up some mornings like today i got into the shower i was like I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> right? For my sins, why am I still doing this? Yeah, why? <laughs> L listen, because I'm doing what I fucking love. Dude, 90% of what I do for money, I do for free. I love it that much. Either because it fulfills me or I know it means so much to the audience or I know that, you know, whether someone on radio or someone who's paid whatever amount of money they pay to come and watch you at a gig. Yeah. They've taken time out of their valuable um, schedules yeah, of course. to be with you. Of course. That's a beautiful thing. Sure. I mean, um, I, was, I was, you know, the interview I did uh, last night at uh, Mafiking FM in, in Mafiking, I was telling them just last year was probably my busiest gigging year in about 10 years. And I've been off radio. And, and the reason I'm able to do that That's is phenomenal. because when you build solidly, Mm -hmm. When you are memorable, when you are impactful, your brand and the goodwill that you've built will feed you for the rest of however long you want to continue doing that. That's why I continue to gig. I mean, like I was saying, Thursday I was in Bots, Friday uh, I was in Pretoria. From Pretoria I had to go to uh, Durban, from Durban I had to go to Port Elizabeth, yes, yeah, had to come back. Yesterday I wow. had to be in Mafiking and then make sure I'm back in four this morning. So I literally slept... Uh, in my shuttle on the way back to Joburg so that I could at least have a bit of rest for the show here. But because I'm doing what I love, yeah. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. And you, you don't ever feel like you're just a little bit tired because it, it must get to you at some point. I mean, you've also got a family. You've also got like, a, a, you know, this, this international yeah. stuff you do. I mean, there's a lot going on. You know what gets to me the most is probably the parental guilt of not seeing enough of your of kids. not seeing enough of my kids. I mean, uh, my boy just turned eight. Jeez. And, and you know, ki kids just want your time. And we, we often think because we can afford to buy them stuff that you've done enough, mm -hmm. kids half it's the time the actually don't give a fuck about mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Are you spending time with them? Yeah. But even more importantly, are you keeping your promise that on Sunday we're going to kick a ball? 
fucking kick a ball with your boy on Sunday. Right. That's what you promised to do. Kids don't forget any disappointment, no matter how arb it may seem, no matter how, but we're just going to kick a ball. That's all he wanted. Yeah. And 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 so, you know, with 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 our kids, every evening we we talk about our day. Uh, we talk about, you know, what was your low light? What was your highlight? What did you enjoy about your day? Did anything make you sad? You know, what made you feel like you're, you know, the king of the world? And so I was away on Thursday. Mm-hmm. But before we got on the road, I spent <clears throat> about 30 minutes just kicking the ball with my eight-year-old. So that evening when they were doing the little... Uh, you know, highlights for the day. That, that was his highlight. That we got to man. kick a ball. That's very so, special. So because I've been gigging for 35 years, uh, radio for about 31, and a, a, and a parent for 28 years, I've got 28 years of parental guilt. <laughs> Now try dealing with that. <laughs> that's, that's horrific. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot of parental guilt. That's yeah. older than me. <laughs> Dude, in fact, my guilt uh, could raise you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if people are wondering why I'm quiet, I am sitting amongst giants, both figuratively and literally. Gareth is what, what, seven feet now? Uh, he's still growing old, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, some mornings, not but, some mornings. This yeah. shoulder's a bit fucked from gym. <laughs> oh. Is it gym or did you sleep bad? No, well, probably both. <laughs> probably both. But don't you find it amazing, though, that the fact that you can find time for gym, yeah. you start seeing why you ought to be at gym. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. Because, so important. Because I can Ooh. keep up with my schedule because of gym. Yeah. Because if I wasn't gymming, I'd be on drugs. And also, if, if, I, if I get into bed at night and I'm not tired. Yeah then I won't sleep properly and then I'll be tired the next day as well. Exactly. So I have to, I have to exhaust myself yeah. and e- empty the tank. I actually think, I actually think I must find more to do because I mean, it sounds to me like I'm really slacking when I compare myself to <laughs> what you're up to at the moment. <laughs> maybe just told incredible. You, you slept right on the shuttle on the way from the airport <laughs> exactly. and you maybe, slept all night. Yeah. And maybe, maybe date someone younger. They'll empty your tank very fast. Oh uh, yeah. Un- unintended. I, yeah, I, I tried that last year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, nah. Sorry, we haven't heard. No, so no, no, no. I mean, like it was a very short lived uh, experience, yes. but it was, it, it was, I, I kind of found that I'm becoming more selfish and, and more set in my ways, which happens to, to men especially. Yes. But as you get older, right, you, you wake up, you want your coffee, you, you want to be… Creature of habit. Yeah, you, you, want, you want your shower pressure so yes. much. Yeah. You want like… Uh, you want change. All that stuff yeah. that you like. And if your stuff isn't organized, and I know you're a bit like this too, in, in, get in, grumpy. I, I was going to say… You're pedantic. You, 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 you just like me. Your, your, your life… <laughs> philosophy becomes fit in or fuck off right because this is how i do exactly and then because she's younger than you she wants to maybe (laughs) come let's shower together she wants to shower hottest i'm like why are you in this lava pool no 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 no. so so yeah dating younger is not always is it is it always i mean it's also difficult especially post what you've had to go through now Mm. to know whether someone's really in it for the right reasons to tell you the honest truth, I've reached a point where my trust levels are at zero. Sure. So, in other words, there's just yeah. no chance. Like, like no, my trust, my <laughs> trust no levels chance. of anyone's intentions are at zero, zero, zero. But so, fresh, that's that's not great for so, you, because it means you know, in in order to get a little, you have to give a little, and if that's not happening, then you're in a worse situation even than me, who's the, selfish as hell. No, no. The thing is, you do it obviously within a context. You know so someone I mean? you've known for a very long time. So, so, so there are people that I will let into my circle. There right. are people that I will trust for whatever, oh. uh, in, at whatever level. But for instance, if I get a random DM, that's what it's going to be. You're going to have a monologue right. in, in my DMs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I don't trust people's intentions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, geez, once bitten, twice shy, they say. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah I, wants, shame on you. Yeah. I, listen, I also think that, that, um, Someone said the other day, in fact, we spoke about it on the show, one of the ways to live longest is to have meaningful relationships, yes. mm. right? And I think that that doesn't have to be just the one person who's in your life. And I mean, yeah. you've been married before. Sure. And that's, you never, you never say goodbye to that person completely. They're do, always part of your life. Do you and, know that I only moved out two months ago? We've been really? Living, we've been living together for the last, well, I mean, we separated about three years ago. Yeah. Uh, divorce was finalized um, just under a year ago, but we've been living in the same house. I mean, I've just been living in the guest 
wing. That's incredible. Because we didn't hate each other. No. So there's no reason for no, me to not. all of a sudden, you know, pack my bags and say, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. But I think it was also important for the kids to understand that, you know, you might be divorcing, but you don't hate each other. Right. And 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 there's no animosity. There's no, you know, we, we were throwing poo at each other. So because my daughter's friends also had parents going through divorces, which were ugly. For her, it was a bit confusing. She's like, my friend's parents are fighting. Like, why are you guys getting along? <laughs> and she's, I mean, she's 14, but she was, she was 11 at the time when we, yeah. we told them that, listen, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to call it quits. But um, yeah. There's, there's, never, there's never a right time though, but it's how you handle it, right? It's how and, you handle it. And then they're never going to be resentful to either of you because you're handling it properly. You hope. And, and at I think because we sat down and we said to one another, what's in the best interest of the kids? Mm. That regardless of where things go between us, Priority. what's in the best interest of the kids? Mm. And, you know, we, we're working together for the kids. So it's important that they don't see us pulling one another's hair out or, yeah. or you're trying to poison each other. No, you know? so, absolutely. So, but, so, but that also, if you, if you were staying at home mm. effectively that also means it's not like you're going to be uh bringing home uh, girls to have sex with um, I, 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 <laughs> it's absolutely. not gonna happen you, you know you know you, so you, you behave you, yourself you, you choose you you prioritize certain things you go back yeah. to you know to dating like you're in high school and shagging, right. shagging in the car you absolutely know? <laughs> <laughs> and why did you look at me for that can i relate no, no. <laughs> i'm a good okay, Christian boy he's been living in his car until just recently we found him a house up the road um so someone says here, what drugs would you be doing if you weren't doing gym fresh? What drugs do people do uh, to keep up with themselves? I don't, well, I don't know. Okay, so I, I, let's just talk about the, how, how gigs and things work. Yeah. Because I know you also know lots of event organizers. Mm, they, mm. There was a point somewhere like around maybe 2011, 2012, yeah. where people stopped spending as much on alcohol and suddenly they started buying water, which was very suspicious. <laughs> and I don't know if it's gone back or not because yeah. I actually don't go out that much anymore. I can tell you. What's the story? Um, so I was in uh, Ibiza last year mm -hmm. um, because um, Temba had a residency at a club there. So I was one of the guests. That's cool. And then on the Saturday, we went to check out Black Coffee mm. um, at High Ibiza. And no, drugs are still a big business. Huge. Huge. Um, and and, and the, the sad... I love the way everyone in this country <laughs> pretends it's not happening. You know, it's like, no, no, don't worry. No, There's but even in this that. country. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, Durban. I started gigging in Durban 97, 98 when, sure. I, when I started at uh, YFM and started doing studio mix on um, SABC One. Right. And, and, and without fail, whenever you had a gig in Durban, there'd be a shooting either outside the club or in the club. Jeez. And then around 99, 2000, 2001, ecstasy started making its way into the clubbing scene, or, or rather the black clubbing scene, mm. uh, because, uh, you know, it, it was already there yeah, already um, amongst the, the, the white kids. Yeah. But it wasn't such a big thing. They were doing thing. those raves. Do you remember yes, those yes. Uh, those big 24-hour raves and things? Exactly. I have a friend who used to go to those. So, 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 <laughs> so, 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 so ecstasy wasn't such a big deal um, amongst the, the black community at the time, especially in the clubs. Yeah. But, you know, with the proliferation of ecstasy, you started having less shootings because generally people on E are much happier, are chilled, yeah, friendlier, are chilled. <laughs> yeah, full of love. So um, I'm almost certain if anyone did a research paper on the relationship between the proliferation of ecstasy and the decrease in gun violence outside Durban clubs in the early 2000s, there's definitely a link. Now, that is worth celebrating. <laughs> 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 this is the point where I jump in and I say, officially on the Gareth Cliff show, DJ Fresh, who is promoting E. <laughs> DJ Fresh on E. E, on e right? <laughs> no, but, but, but it did change because, I mean, I, I never really understood the drug scene because I was never really part of it. You know, we used to drink a lot. And we in were, fact, you didn't even drink that much. I used to drink a lot. And then I would get everyone else involved. A wild night was like get 10 tequila shots. Exactly. You know what the weirdest yeah. thing is? Um, <clears throat> the weirdest thing is I've been offered cocaine all of twice in my entire career. Yeah, me, me too. And only, only once for me. And you know why? Because they, they worried that we would 
crash scupper the whole thing for them because we we know the club owner we know the uh, the people the, the bouncers they worried they don't want to offer us stuff uh, plus they think we've always got our own which we don't i was thinking maybe we're not cool enough that well, was maybe my that maybe that <laughs> but, maybe that i think that's probably a big part of it but too. the weirdest thing though is when i travel overseas People come to me and ask me if I've got party favors because I guess the big black guy is always the guy with the drugs. <laughs> and, and I remember the first time I was in Miami it was 2002, yeah. 2001. And I had all these, you know, white girls walking up to me in the club uh-huh. asking me, do you, have, do, do you have party favors? <laughs> and I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about until I asked an uh, American friend of mine, he's like, oh, they think you're a drug dealer. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. I guess it's because I'm a big black dude. But that's overseas. Here, that's overseas. Here, yeah. You, yeah. you just never had the offers and no one ever thought you had anything. But people just don't think I'm cool enough to offer drugs. Yeah, that's, probably, that's probably a good and, point. And, and not that I miss drugs, though. No. Not that I miss drugs, no. but, uh, and and I think you've had a similar conversation with the same guy, a, a, a radio legend, like from years be- before we were on radio, who said that we kick ass on radio, but if we added a bit of cocaine, we'd kick even bigger ass. I know who you're talking exactly. about. And he did say that. Exactly. And, and I'm really glad I didn't. Though. I heard a story just the other day from a friend of mine. She came up to visit me. She told me a relative of hers. Yeah has had a serious, serious habit for a mm. long time, mm. Coke. And mm. I mean, this is going on in South Africa, right? Yeah. All over the place. People yeah. don't talk about it. In America, they're now talking about fentanyl and, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and all kinds of other drugs. Mm. But here in South Africa, we just pretend it's not happening. Of course, people talk about tuk and they'll talk about nyope because yeah. those things, it's okay to talk about them because mm. it sounds almost like you're a philanthropist if you bring it up. Yes, yes. You yes. know what I mean? Mm. But we've got serious problems in this country. There are a lot of people who are, this is the only happiness they get. A friend of mine is an ad exec. Oh, and yeah. he's a so-called functional cocaine user. Oh, yeah. So he only uses, for instance, if he's going into like big board meetings. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, but, imagine sitting in that but, board meeting. But, but on weekends, he doesn't touch it. But he says it gives him the edge really? when he goes into the office and he's had just, you know, a line or two. Mm. So, so he's convinced he's not addicted, and he says it's just functional. I'm like, well, dude, whatever floats your boat. I mean, I, the I don't definition know. of addiction, like if I could jump in here, the yeah. definition of addiction would be if it adversely, it's some, it's a habit that adversely affects your life. So if or other people around, or you. other mm, people around. Mm. So he is not addicted by his own definition. Well, I mean, there's 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 functional drug users, users there's functional yeah. alcoholics, yeah, there's fu- functional users. antidepressant mm-hmm. users. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, people are on all kinds of antidepressants. What they say, one in every three people. Yeah, exactly. In, in the friend, US. In fact, I've got friends who microdose mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's become a big thing. And and mm-hmm. and and they say they are performing better than they've ever performed at work from microdosing uh, mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, kids, we're not encouraging drug use. We're just Talking yeah, no, about no, no. what's happening out there. No, I think I think people need to be adult about this. Yeah. You know, you need to realize that like not no no single thing is all bad and no single thing is all good mm, in this realm. Mm, mm. I mean, there are people who, if they didn't have a, a, a big blowout on a Friday, would be so tense and un, unbelievably horrible the rest of the week that they wouldn't be able to get anything done. And then they explode at the wrong time. And then and yeah. So I think if you can measure that, if you can be in charge of yourself to that degree, mm, like this mm, friend of yours who mm. does the the coke before a board meeting. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't want to be in that board meeting. There's, but. A, there's a I don't agree with your philosophy, but there's this uh, philosophy in uh, one of the Ivy Leagues in America, Brown. Mm. Uh, they say so. They won't teach you. They won't say don't use Molly, but they'll give you. They'll teach you the science behind Molly, so that you know you're doing Molly if you're doing yeah. Molly. If you're gonna do Molly, do the right stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of. Well, I, I, listen, yeah, to, get each, the good shit. to each, each his own. own. Yeah. Um, so here we go. Uh, Speedy Sam says, last time I spent time with that legend being you, Fresh, yes. was on the Bikers for Mandela trip with Zelda in South Africa. Do you remember you guys did that? That was also around 2014, 15, somewhere but, around there. I think we started around 2010, 2011. Yeah, you did it every yeah. year for a couple of years. Uh, it, it, one of the reasons I don't feel the cold that people have been complaining about <laughs> over the last week or two is because when we did Bikers for Mandela Day, I was on my Harley Davidson. Other yes. guys were on, the, you know, these nice fancy BMWs with <laughs> with heated um, 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 handlebars. I was on my, my my Harley, fully exposed to the elements, and without fail, there'd be snow either in the Eastern Cape or in the Free State. 
So we'd r- so 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 the one free, year the free state's the worst. I keep telling people. Yes. Yeah. So so the year that we met Bill Clinton when he went to uh, Kurnu to see the old man. Right. Um, it had snowed in the Eastern Cape, and we rode through the snow, Oof. and. You know when even your balls yep, dude. are... are <laughs> <laughs> it gets into your balls and your bones. Remember when you were a kid and you're going to school and it's so cold, your little toe goes to sleep. <laughs> your balls do that Go to sleep. when you're riding through the <laughs> snow. So I went through that. Uh, um, for so how all, these, all these cold plunge people could... Go yeah. take a back seat because you were on the back in the ball freezing cold of the Free State it, and the it, Eastern Cape. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, so because of you know all the years we did bikers for Mandela Day. Yeah. I don't get cold anymore. It's the weirdest thing. So I can literally stand in the cold. That's amazing. And I'm fine with it. It's like a superpower. <laughs> it's like a superpower. <laughs> it's like fuck where, involved. It's like where's yeah. the ice, guys? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not built for the cold here. Huh? Yeah. I'm so glad. I often go down on my knees and say ancestors Amatlozi, thank you so much for coming to africa because i would be suffering in europe right now i hate it oh my god all right so um we've got a couple of interesting things here uh someone just sent me this it's yeah. from leanne manis's twitter so let's see what she has to say love leanne manis oh love leanne manis so there's something here they've covered up a statue of mm-hmm. cyril in plastic in like oh. bubble wrap look oh, at this wow. they've taken a statue because it says where is here, that? This commemorative statue was unveiled by His Excellency, Mr. Suru Ramaphosa. His Excellency. Passing our father of the nation. Iconic. Oh, so it's a statue of Madiba. Uh. But they've covered it in... Pla- I wonder why they would do that. Do you think that they're worried about people... Vandalizing it, maybe. Vandalizing it. Uh, p- so Leanne, Leanne Manis says, I'm in Umtata today for the unveiling of two statues. Oh, okay. They're still unveiling them. So oh, that's what it is. okay. So it's a brand new statue. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's cool. At least something's happening for Mandela Day. I'm, I'm proud of them for doing that. <laughs> Okay, well, there we go. Some interesting stuff going on. So they're unveiling those statues today. That's a cool thing. So we'll see that a bit later on. I've got John Jacques Cornish joining us for African Analysis in a minute. Do you want to grab a coffee or you? I okay? love JJ. I'm He's wanna, great. Do you want to join us? I want to stick okay. around. Man. Well, here he is. The, the great JJ Cornish. This is brought to you by the Johannesburg Business School. It's our chance to catch up on everything that's going on in African Analysis. Monsieur JJ Cornish, bonjour. And, and bonjour. happy Bastille Day for Thank you for that, and happy, happy. Mandela Day for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're, we're swapping national holidays here. Uh, JJ, All right, so, JJ, yeah. JJ I'm, a, I'm a fan of your work. I've been a fan for years. So it's an honor to be on the same um, uh, well, channel as well. You. Nice to nice to be with you. I wish I could contribute to a conversation about testicles and cocaine, you know, but I'm too old and too boring. <laughs> I was so uncool never... in the sixties, and I'm still uncool. So, <laughs> so you've never you've never but... done like coke on like on off a pair of balls. <laughs> no, none of them. I do know that the expression. I know the expression "freeze the balls off a brass monkey" is not actually vulgar. A brass monkey is a uh, some navigational device from the old ships, and uh, when it got very oh, yes. cold, you know, the, their balls would not. <laughs> and it needed balls to rotate, and now they didn't. And uh, uh, John Robbie always used to tell that every winter that it's not, it's not un, it's uh, not uncouth to say that. But but uh, so, it, it's been an so it's JJ, been a fantastic conversation. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for making yourself available this morning again. You know, we uh, we ask all the important questions here, like uh, balls and cocaine. But the <laughs> the really important question, and this is something I think Fresh will understand too, because he flies a lot between South Africa and the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. He's also been up to the north. He's been all over this place, traveled almost as much as you. Why are our flights so expensive inside of Africa? Why does it cost me more to fly to? Harare or Habarone or to Maputo than it does to to fly to, I don't know, say Rio or something like that? Well, because in many cases, and Fresh should know this, you have to go sometimes into Europe first and then come back to your African destination. I mean, when I was, I, I got deep vein thrombosis observing elections in Tunisia. I had to go there twice in a month, and both times I had to go via the Middle East to get there. No direct flights. So that's the problem. Mm. The most expensive destinations for us are Zambia, the Seychelles, Senegal, Cape Verde. For goodness sake, Cape Verde in the old days, 
with the Boers in power, we have to go around the continent. We'd go through Cape Verde. And that's one of the mm -hmm. most expensive now. And then Eswatini. The fact is, you see, the authorities think and they believe, I mean, apart from their own officials who get to junk it and go flying all the time, that flying is a luxury and they've got to tax it. So they tax the buggery out of uh, the uh, visa fees and, and taxes uh, oh, yeah. on flights. They are twice as much. <laughs> twice as much as they are in Europe and the Middle East. So uh, that's what makes Africa the most expensive uh, continent to fly around and to fly out of. Uh, it, it's absolutely iniquitous. And, you know, until they fix that, they can't complain about our tourism uh, not being yeah, at exactly. the peak it should be because our prices here are so good, but it costs a king's ransom to get here. Uh, the higher right. ticket prices are, again, because of, uh, the, the, you know, they just don't have the demand to give uh, to to make for the wholesale prices that you get when you fly to Europe, you know we used to, uh, when I lived in London we used to fly into Europe for five pounds, and then they'd say can we throw in a hotel for how much is that going to be? Oh, another five pounds, you know that's the sort of thing you can do when you have huge volumes and we don't have them. So until the authorities and in certainly in countries like ours and Kenya, the big tourist countries, realize that taxing us, taxing the flights to the extent they do, is counterproductive. We're not going to get the tourists that we need. Good luck on that front. You wanted to ask something that I interrupted. No, no, I was going to say, I did a lot of flying between uh, Botswana and Joburg last year. Hmm. The ticket was 10 grand. You see, I mean, that's ridiculous. Grand. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You like can get, how? You can, can you get like it? a 900 rand flight to Durban if, you, if you're clever about it, if you Absolutely. book in advance, you know? No, I, you know, you can still get flights to Europe. Well, uh, before before COVID, uh, you could get flights to Europe for, what, three grand, four grand. So it was cheaper to go to London than to go to Gaborone. It's just crazy, you know. Mm. All right. So let's talk Absolutely about Tunisia iniquitous. quickly. Absolutely. Because, because Tunisia has been in the news. I mean, Ons Jabeur, who was the... Um, one of the, the finalists in Wimbledon this week. I love that name, Ons Jabeur. She, she's from Tunisia, but they're yeah. in the news for another reason. There's a migrant control pact with the European Union. This sounds like uh, something that I'm just guessing here, a wild guess, but I think it's probably not going to be so good for the migrants. I I don't know why. You know, I always say this to you, Gareth. You're too young to be so <laughs> cynical. cynical. <laughs> but, you're, but you're perfectly accurate in this regard. Yeah. Do you remember... Maybe you're all too young to remember because it, it's all of 10 years ago now that uh, the EU straining every sinew to keep the migrants out made a pact yeah. with Libya so that they yeah. Libyans would turn them, you know, would stop people and inter them instead of letting them get onto the boats. Mm. And uh, yeah, at the, then finally, there was the story about the Libyans getting involved in the slave trade trade with migrants i mean you know when you hand things over to the libyans all bets on anyway now tunisia <laughs> has replaced tunisia has replaced libya as the launch point for the most number of african migrants wanting to get to europe i think i've told the story about when i was observing those elections in libya I, in tunisia i went to see some young people to ask them if they were going to vote. They said, you go to this mm -hmm. cafe, that's where all the young people hang out. I went and, you know, the conversation was not about the voting in two days time. It was about getting on the boat in two days time. And I said, sure. but how could you spend all your savings and take such a risky thing? And they said, there's absolutely nothing for us here. And we don't know exactly what drives wow. them. Sometimes it's in Eritrea, for example, it's the draft. You can get uh, called up until 65. <laughs> so, you know, you flee that. Uh, it's even, 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 even Fresh and yeah. I would be in trouble if, if they had a call up to 65. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, but I mean, it, it's scary. And what, what, what they're doing. And, and, and then finally, when I was there, I heard of boats actually sinking. And I wondered whether it was some of these young people I'd been speaking to. The fact is, that's the biggest uh, t turning off point. So now the EU has made a deal with uh, uh, Tunisia, and they're giving them a billion do uh, euros. Uh, the, 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 there's things that have got to be met, but they're giving them an immediate wow. cash injection. And they say, you know, this is about uh, uh, green 
uh, energy, the economy, oh, yeah, sure. stability. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. when you see the headlines, it's about migrants. You know, that's what they do. It's basically, My, the, more billion, migrants have died billion, in the uh, A billion euros to keep your people in your country and don't send them to us. That's what it is. That's exactly it. And, and, and the, you'd think that they would address the issues that are causing people to leave, you know, uh, give everybody in Tunisia a uh, uh, Datsun Leaf or, you know, Nissan Leaf to drive around in. That would be green yeah. and keep the migrant. <laughs> but, you know, it's very um, sad. I mean, we shouldn't laugh about it. The Mediterranean is the most dangerous migrant route in the world. And this year, more people have died in the Mediterranean than ever before, so far, uh, with here, the good weather. Here's a... Here's a good point being made by Steve. It's probably cheaper to drive to Botswana than, than to, to fly, right? Um, I actually do that. Yeah, you do. Oh, much by, by, yeah, by a, a million three, miles. It's a three-hour three <laughs> three drive, right? and that, you actually get there quicker because airport, you have to yeah. be there two hours before, then you're flying for almost an hour, and then you're waiting for immigration. If if you'd driven, you'd have long arrived. So There yeah, we go. Well That's drive. much better. Much better. All right, JJ, one last thing we want to talk to you about this morning. Um Russia have signed some sort of wartime deal that allows the Ukraine to ship grain to developing countries because we know that the Ukraine is a major supplier of some food security to Africa. So this is good news for us. And um, and see, Russia is not always the bad guy. In this case, we've come out with a good deal. No, Russia is very much the bad guy. That deal was signed a year ago. <laughs> oh, and no, they Russia's were now no. aging oh, on it now. Okay. They say no. The fact, oh, the fact okay. is that was negotiated by Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the Turkish uh, president, uh, yeah. and uh, it was right. signed, and uh, it was agreed that the Black Sea ports, they could, uh, and they were, you know, sending thousands of tons of, of food. Now Russia is saying, no, well, you, you haven't given us what you said you would. There's still sanctions against Russia, uh, so we're stopping it. The fact is, uh, okay. we believe that Russia will allow it if they can get a better deal. Uh, Erdogan is seeing Putin next month and maybe he can talk him to going back. But th this has been condemned. Anthony Blinken has called it weaponizing food. Uh, Antonio Guterres, the UN boss, is saying that, uh, you know, this is a blow to poor people around the world. And uh, But we're still going to keep going. The Ukrainians are saying, well, we'll still try to export from the Black Sea ports. The Russians are saying, you know, you are not sending it to the poor people, as you've said. We don't know if that's mm. the case. Certainly, the wheat prices started to climb. And even on the news that Russia is closing the, the, the this, uh, supply line, prices have gone up in the last few days. So, uh, you know, uh, this is a, this is bad news uh, for, for people around the world, including us, people who relied on the wheat, the grain, the sunflower seed oil, which... Uh, the, the, Ukraine and Russia both supply, not coming anymore. So our food prices are going to go up, sad to say. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, JJ, very good to catch up with you. And thank you for giving us some insights into what's going on in the rest of Africa. It's always good to, to do this. We do it every two weeks. And JJ Cornish brought to you by the Johannesburg Business School. Thank you, sir. We'll check in with you soon. Thank you. You don't mind if I listen in because the program is no. fascinating. Sure. We'll, we'll talk some more I, about frozen balls. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but wait, why not? What about, what about fooling around with loose women? I mean, that's the one <laughs> topic you haven't gone into in detail. Actually, Maybe. we did. We did at the beginning, actually. Oh, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, missed it. yeah well, that, luckily for you, it's a podcast. It's, it's not JJ. only live. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, JJ. Bye-bye. There he is. JJ Cornish. Yeah, I mean, I I used to listen to him doing his Africa report back yes. in like what, 20 years ago. Absolutely. Um, and it's still some of the best stuff that you could find on, on local stuff. Local Dude, news. some of the most solid broadcasters started 20, 30 years ago. And, and, and as long as they haven't been, you know, put out to pasture, they still deliver. The funniest thing is I still get asked like when I'll fill up with petrol. Yeah. How's DJ French? <laughs> People come up to me, they're like, hey, how are you, bro? And I go, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm like, How's fresh? And I go, you know, we don't see each other every day. <laughs> May I tell you a wilder story? Yeah, go um, on. So I presented Studio Mix on SABC One with Bob Mabena and Yo, Melanie Son. I remember that. Um, 97, 98, 99. <laughs> and as recently as just before Bob Mabena passed away, someone said to me, so how is it working with Bob? 
Sure, man. Like I last worked with Bob like sure. two thousand. But he was a I, I think I think people really treat good guy. the entertainment industry like we all live in the one co- house. We live in a commune, <laughs> and it's like so. Uh, Gareth, I guess you're going to sleep. And okay, now I'm going for my gigs. People will still so we have s- breakfast together, and then we yeah see each this, other at night. Like <laughs> to this day, people will say to me, "Can you help me get in touch with Zola? Can you give him yeah, a letter yeah, for yeah. me?" There we go. Like I haven't seen Zola in. Well, I interviewed him about 2018. Wow. But before that, I hadn't seen Zola so in over 10 years. But people literally believe we all live in a commune. But, so. but as speaking from the people point of view, I will speak for the people. Yes, <laughs> yes go on. So, so no, but like, I, I didn't have 5FM growing up in a rural town called Craddock in the Eastern Cape. But I remember my uncle used to tell me stories. Also, I'm too young to listen to you guys. Uh, you guys are very old. But oh, wow. I, my, my, <laughs> my uncle used to tell me stories about how he used to listen to your guys' show, about how he'd listen to The Drive with Five. Yeah. And then he was fresh. And then he'd be, in the morning, it would feel like continuity because Gareth would pick up on something that was said. Yeah, like the but we before. actually used to listen to each other's shows, which is exactly. And then it, that, sounded, that it sounded like a conversation. <laughs> so in people's point of view, you guys do talk all yeah. the time. Because if I yeah, listen to driving from work and I'm driving to work, I'm always listening to the same conversation by these couple of friends. They could be sitting in the same room. That's yeah. Look, uh, look again, I don't want to turn this into a, um, a a massive kind of nostalgia trip, but I I do think we we hit the market just the right time. Like we were very lucky. The timing was fantastic. Was South incredible. Africa South Africa was the most positive, exciting place in the world. And I think also because 5FM wasn't the political animal that, say, Metro FM was, Mm -hmm. we got away with a lot. Everything. Because we said a lot about the Oaks in Parliament that wouldn't cut it right now. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I look, I mean, I listen back to some of the promos of the radio we did 15 years ago at 5FM. Do you have recordings? Do you keep any of that stuff? I've got every single promo that we cut. You're joking. Every single skit that we cut. You're kidding. I have none. Nothing. <laughs> Kept nothing. Dude. I, I'm, I'm sure Rena has. I've no. Got, I've got a hard drive of my YFM promos. Oh, man. Why are you documenting nothing? What is this? Uh, I, I, like, if you, if you drop dead right now, what are we playing? Nothing. <laughs> when, 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 I finish, when I finish a show, I, 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 I stop counting. Yeah. No, since we started this, obviously, everything's in the everything's catalog. Everything's documented, right? but, yes. But, yeah, I mean, all that stuff. Also, the problem with it is that technically they own it. It belongs. Right? But, so. but it's still a memory you need to keep, bro. Oh, no, for sure. Absolutely. Um, I remember Rhythm Nation. What an awesome place. Bob was a legend. Yeah, Bob. Bob Mabena was a really special human being. And I remember he, I saw him for the last time, probably about five years ago. Mm, mm. And, um, you know, he, he was always so like chilled, but he had a great sense of humor. I mean, that guy he could make, it, sense of humor. Oh, he could make yeah, you laugh. Yeah, yeah. Such a good human being. Loved him. Uh, Fresh's Tabo and Becky perfume skit on 5FM was the funniest shit I've heard on radio, says uh, Human Shield. We did, awesome. a ton, we did a ton of those. It was, it was wild. In fact, we even did one. I can't remember um, what the ANC had responded to what that had been said by someone. And we created a, a fragrance for the ANC. <laughs> That we called <laughs> arrogance <laughs> by the ANC, and, and, and I look back, it's like, how did we get away with that? Oh, that's hilarious. Like, how did management not say, um, yeah. well, you know, down, down well, a bit? Most of them didn't. They weren't. They weren't really paying attention. They were too afraid. I mean, did they call you into meetings and ever tell you you can and can't do things? Um, no. No, me not, neither. Not, not well, once. Imagine calling no. DJ Fresh to a meeting. <laughs> no, and I used to try. They would say, "Can you come in for a meeting at 3 I'd be like, "No." <laughs> There's a wild, wild west. Okay, I can't come. Sorry. Oh, but you know, we need to talk about no. Sorry, can't come. I'll we can schedule something for October. Yeah, call my office. <laughs> my people will talk to your people. Oh man. Remember the fresh laugh ringtones, says Graham. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. still I still have one of those somewhere on it's saved as a file on some some hard drive. That's hilarious stuff. Fresh house flavor four, my nostalgic students student days blazing and grooving. Yeah, listen, you put out some good music, man. In fact, that's another thing that's really cool. Fresh House Flavor 1 and 2 are available on um, iTunes right now. Really? Uh, yeah, they've been available for the last two weeks now. Fantastic. Um, three and four will be going up, I think, in the next two weeks. And then we'll do five and six after that. So, absolutely. So, amazing. Uh, Fresh House Flavor is on iTunes right Oof. now. If you're yeah, listen, feeling that, a bit nostalgic. That stuff, I, I used to sometimes just tune in for that for the cheese of the yes, day and then yeah. I'd sometimes tune in for the mixes oh yes and then sometimes i would be there for the whole three hours and then i, I just got nothing else done 
Yeah. And I yeah. think that's how it was for a lot. But then if you're stuck in traffic, that's what you want. Dude, my <laughs> kids knew that the minute we get into the car to drop them off or listen yeah. to Uncle Gareth and no one else. Oh, boy. You know, and I'd oh, always boy. pray, fuck. <laughs> don't, don't, say don't, anything. Yeah. <laughs> don't say anything. Don't say anything. I think a lot of parents used to do that. Oh, man. Sanele says, was it not the Tony Yangeni skit? I remember he once called you on your personal number after you did something. No, no, no. We did a skit about uh, Tony Yangeni being uh, thrown in jail. Oh, yeah. And I met him at um, St. Eve's in Cape Town. He, oh, yeah. he, he came to party. and uh, Not at Tsar. Remember he had Tsar. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't at Tsar. And he told me that, oh, my kids told me about um, b- b- some skit you did. We laughed about it. We laughed about it. But um, so it's not like they didn't find out or hear about well, I some mean, of the stuff we said or did. I, I know that, uh, that Cyril Ramaphosa's kids used to listen to us as well. Oh, and, yes. And yes. I still hear occasionally from people who say, oh, you know, now you've, you've suddenly, uh, you've started going really hard on our dad. And is this fair? And I'm like, <laughs> well, he went, he decided to become president. What must I be gentle? Take he, out the kid glove. He decided to be president. And then after that, he stopped deciding anything. He stopped doing anything. <laughs> right. He's just sitting around at home. I'd love to know where, like, what is he doing on an average morning while the rest of us are trying to get to work? <laughs> trying to find a retired judge for the next inquest. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Damn cheese of the day that unlocked memories. How did you guys come up with these things? Well, we had to. <laughs> to <laughs> it, was, it was the wild, wild west. They had to be guns. Yeah, no, of course. I think also because a lot of us started radio or on radio before there was internet, you were forced to create content. You were forced to think out the box. You were forced to, you know, turn. And you had to know shit. You couldn't just Google things. Exactly. Right? You actually exactly. had to know stuff. No, no. Like no. I said, I literally started on radio 31 years ago in 1992, July. There was no internet. Right. So you literally had to go to the news wires. So it was AFP and Reuters, uh, hoping to find stories. Uh, we had to buy magazines and, you know, find stories there. Reader's Digest was your best friend. Right. Um, Remember that. No, Reader's Digest was your best <laughs> friend because, I mean, some of the best radio topics came out of a re- Reader's Digest. Yeah. So, so you were forced to work to create radio. And on top of that, you had no uh, show producer. You know, nowadays, every show has a radio producer and then mm-hmm. this. I'm like, we were one-man shows. When I started... Well, when after- we started, yeah, yes, absolutely. When I started yeah. the afternoon drive show at YFM uh, in 97, I literally did everything myself. I had to call the the, the police officer that did uh, my traffic reports, uh, Jerry. And set him up to we, talk, we, yeah. We, we now live in the same complex, weirdly Oh, enough. really? Uh, well, same estate. Jerry. Yeah, so so Jerry <laughs> used to do traffic on my, on my, on my show at Y, yeah. but I literally had to call him myself. Huh. So my show IDs, I created those myself. Uh, research for my show, I did that myself. So you were forced to work to create a great show. Yeah. Nowadays, people just show up, That's they get special. a script, and you kind of hope they'll make something <laughs> of it, and they don't, sadly. So Derek says, Fresh as Laugh is the most infectious thing ever. I remember him having a call with Dave Grohl from the Foo, Foo Fighters. Oh, yeah. They were talking about drugs, the line cut out, and Dave came back and said he had to go and take some. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Dude, Dave ah, Grohl was one of the that's, coolest that's so interviews to wow. ever do. What a, what a memory, eh? Jeez, bro. You know, you know what's wild about radio is r- radio lovers remember everything that you do. Half the time you don't remember what you had for a I meal don't, don't. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people will remind you of something you did and you play along because... It must have happened. <laughs> right. We literally Absolutely. had a conversation about yeah, this. Yeah, we were talking about it just before you came in this morning. I'm like, I don't remember what we spoke about yesterday. Uh, Sanella says, uh, oh, my word, uh, G and Fresh had a sumo wrestling match. Is that how you really determine who did afternoon and morning drive? Yeah, we did. We, <laughs> so what they, I mean, management would eventually decide, right? Uh, but, yeah. but we decided, no, we'll make it. Let's make this more interesting. Make a meal of it. Anything yeah. you take out of management's control is bound to be more interesting. Absolutely. So we dressed up in big sumo outfits. I was in Cape Town. In eh? Cape Town, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was in the black one and you were in the white one. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, we were colored. We, we sumo wrestled. <laughs> and I mean, it's shit like that that makes, I suppose, stuff interesting. I'll never forget when you and I took over the Fat Joe show from him. Oh, yes. And we, we, tied, we tied him up and we just took over the show live because it was a live TV show. Yeah. That was pretty good. I think that's one thing um, we lose every time Joe goes on his rants. Because I think Ro, um, Fat Joe is supremely talented. Very. But he's also difficult to 
manage. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I am too. I think you are as well. So well generally, yes. Mm. But, you know, just when Joe disappears off the radar, he disappears off the radar. And then he comes back and then he's gone again. Yeah. And I think it's a great loss. I mean, the entertainment industry is better off with the Fadjo in it. Yeah. You oh, know, absolutely. So, no, no, no. So, I, yeah. I have a lot of time for that guy. Human Shield says, anyone remember when Fresh did a Harry Potter promo or something like that? And he called Hermione, Herminon. <laughs> No, no. So, so I'm not a Harry Potter fan. So I was reading a promo. <laughs> what, for one of the movies? I don't know if it was a promo. We're, we're telling a story about the Harry Potter. And I just read it as I saw it. Hermione. So, so, so we turned that into a promo. And it became one of our most popular promos. It was funny. Jeez. Love that. Uh, and then Carol says, I was only 14 when 5FM was born. I listened to more legendary presenters, you guys included. Yeah, listen, and people come and go, hey. I mean, I've uh, I've said goodbye to a few of them in the last couple of years, and so have you. A few of these guys are not, are not around anymore. In, 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 I think not even just within our industry. I think I almost feel like more people are dying over, Singers, the, last, actors. over the last three years than we've ever lost in a very long time. It, 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 it almost forces you to re-examine your own mortality yeah, you i mean know? i was i was genuinely way more upset about tina turner than i was about eusebius <laughs> no no i remember i remember i remember i remember you said and 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 you know it's it's weird this don't speak ill of the dead thing uh, please that we're forced uh, to subscribe to i mean i remember when you when you wrote your letter to uh, late minister manto shabalalam simang was it, that was one of the first tweets actually it was that, on twitter that, yeah. in fact that was one of your first ever shit storms <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and right. and and it, it had people polarized because mm -hmm. What do you do if a person was, I mean, do we go to Hitler's funeral and say he was a great guy? Some people would. And at least he was married oh, yeah. before he died. Yeah, exactly. Some people would. Uh, and then some people would say, no, it's fine to burn your way through three livers. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Just push yourself to the front of the queue because you're minister of health. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Nico's just woken up to the fact that it's you. Oh, shit, it's fresh. <laughs> well done, Nico. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, it's also 7 o'clock. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go anywhere. Cliffcentral.com. Tuesday morning, our surprise guest. Uh, what a surprise. What a great surprise. DJ Fresh. How nice is that? Love it. You might know Cliff Central as South Africa's podcasting pioneer. Well, of course, we did help kickstart the industry back in 2014, and we've been shaping the space ever since. But did you know that we also do a whole lot more? Uh. a dedicated and growing fan base that's ready to hear all about your business. We simply leverage the power of our brand and help you reach your ideal audience. And the best part of it all is that it's all white label. So whatever you create with us is yours to repurpose and do with it as you see. This week on the Auto Trader Podcast. What cars have, have been able to do is they've, they've changed how people interact with the world and each other and accessibility to things. I mean, we always talk about why the first car essentially gives people freedom. Um, it offers you an opportunity to get a job wherever you want. Mm. Um, it, it gives you an opportunity to change your lifestyle. Um, and I think that's kind of the big difference that, that I, I have against you know people who think you know, rock. I mean, rockets are cool, planes are cool. But I think in terms of everything, 
cars are have definitely made the biggest impact, including trucking and logistics. Yeah, I mean, um, it's created freedom. Mm. It's created independence. Mm. Um, it's created the ability to make the world smaller. Mm. You know, besides the internet, that's made the world smaller now. Because you know, with the internet, you need to be able to deliver stuff. Yeah, and cars are critical to that uh, to that chain, mm. to that value chain. So, so, uh, so, so the internet is in the the, the reality of the internet and um, and click to buy or e commerce is made possible yeah. because of vehicles. Catch us every Monday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and on autotrader.co.za. All right, all right, all right. We are live. It is a Tuesday morning, cliffcentral.com. I am thrilled to be in the studio with an old friend of mine who is also one of the great legends of radio, somebody who's had an incredible career in television, in media more generally. He's also a DJ, a producer, and a talent uh, par excellence, DJ Fresh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you are all those things. Do you do you like um, do you like the the TV stuff? Because I never enjoyed the TV stuff. It was never my thing. And, I, and, I did, and you're I, good at it. I did. I did the TV stuff because it was an opportunity that presented itself. Mm. But the day I did TV, the very next day, I realized that maybe it's a bad idea. Because now people know who the hell you are. They know your face. They recognize you and your privacy is out the window. So I regretted doing TV <laughs> the day after I did my first day. Because there's TV. something beautiful about radio where people don't actually know that much about you. Yeah. The, the, visually. The, the visually, right? is, is, so is, is amazing. They know you yeah. and they can, they can tell you stories about people and, and, and all kinds of things about yeah. the, that, your personality and what makes you laugh and all those things, which is actually more interesting. But also to do TV... Yeah. You have to really love TV because it pays rubbish. It's, it's rubbish. This is where a lot of people don't understand it. budgets Africa. in this country are bullshit. Yeah. I mean, I did um, SA's Got Talent on, on ETV. Mm -hmm. Our budget for the entire season was probably less than what America's Got Talent uh, spend on, on probably one episode. Or just on the food on for just one episode. The budget. For, yeah, e right. Exactly. For catering. The, the, the budget was shocking. But you do it because it's another feather in your cap. And, you know, your portfolio looks slightly more impressive, you know, because you did yeah. a, a TV gig. But I, I don't right. miss TV. So, and I'll never go for a TV audition. But if you offer me a TV gig, I'll take it. You'll take it. Yeah. But they mustn't make you go to an audition. I, I never auditioned either. Yeah. There's always like, come and do this. Anyway, Ma Mash Mashinini says something really useful and interesting. And you've also done this for a lot of people, started their careers off. So um, thanks for introducing some of us to Seoul. First time I heard him was on your show. Yep. I wondered where he disappeared to, and then he had his challenges. Now he's killing it on podcast and mm, chill with mm, Mac G. Mm. And you, you started a lot of people's careers. Dude, I often argue when people tell me about I'm a DJ, I do this, I do that. I tell them that primarily my purpose that I felt was my purpose since I was probably 15, it was to literally change people's lives. I literally intentionally set out to change people's lives or to see how I can make someone's, you know, if you're walking, I know I can make you fly. I always, well, it's almost like a challenge to myself that this, this kid is talented, but I know we can get this kid to the next level. <laughs> so I've literally spent the last 30 years mentoring a ton of people, mm -hmm. whether it was DJ Kent, Euphonic, yep. Dino Bravo, DJ Cleo, DJ Zbu. Oh, um, All of these people are just terrific. Literally a list of about a thousand. Do you think you can spot talent really easily? I can spot talent easily, but sadly, because people see you mentoring others, they think you can do the same for them. Mm -hmm. But I often remind them that if I'm assisting someone, it's because I've seen the potential and the fact that they're fucking doing the legwork already. Yeah. So it's it's inevitable that they will fly, but maybe I'm able to just find them the runway. Maybe they're still looking for a runway, but I am good at helping kids find the runway. No, that a, I'm damn good that's at. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, Hamin says here, just on an aside, I remember Gareth was not half as good looking when I finally saw what he looked like. It was a bit of a shock. <laughs> I actually felt the same <laughs> because you called me to be on your show oh, on uh, 702. Yeah. It was 90... Jeez, dude, 2000. 2000. 
and uh-huh. I'd heard of you. Yeah. And then I walked into the studio, I was like, oh, is this what it looks like? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting. Oh, I don't know what you were expecting. Dude, some of the radio you did at 702 was ahead of its time. Like, like, dude, years ahead of its time. Well, yeah. I, I just wish you'd been appreciated more for the work you were doing at 702 <laughs> or that they understood what the fuck you were trying to do. Well, I almost upended their whole business model. So maybe that wasn't a good idea because they were, they were a news and talk radio station. And I was doing like uh, the most outrageous shit you could imagine there. Yeah. It was lots of fun though. Um, who gave DJ Fresh his first big break into broadcasting, says Parallel Parking? Broadcasting wise, I'm not going to give anyone credit. You did it yourself. I, I remember, so in, in bots, when you finished high school, mm-hmm. in order to get a government bursary, you had to do national service. So I did my national service. I went and taught for a year. I was a math and Setswana teacher. Um, at a school. By the way, that's a good system. We should have that here. Absolutely. Don't um, you think? I, I don't know why they did away with the system because I thought, for instance, it's also brilliant that you're forcing us to take a gap year, but in that gap year, you're serving your nation yeah. and you're working. And so you're putting something back. Exactly. Putting yeah. something back, exactly. right? So, um, so, <clears throat> so I did my national service and when we were done with our national service, I'd applied for law school. Yeah. Kind of like what you did. Um, <laughs> the, 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 Neither of us finished law, did we? <laughs> you didn't finish your law degree. Um, I did a year of, of my LLB. No, no, so, I, so, yeah. I, I stupidly did three. <laughs> How did you get past first? I, I, no, I, I managed. Only just. But why was, did you get past first? I was already doing campus radio. And ah, it, was, it was like yes. the excuse to keep doing campus radio oh, yes, was that I had to yes. pass, right? Oh, yes. Yes. And I remember when I, when I dropped out of law, my parents were like, well, we're not paying for any of this shit. Mm-hmm. So then I had to go and get a job. So I, I went into radio. Yeah. So that was kind of how I got it. And then they re fell in love with you. Well, <laughs> I don't know. My parents still think that they, they're not sure what I do for a living. Yeah. <laughs> still not sure. They're like, how can you get paid to do this? That doesn't seem like you're adding yeah, like value. We, yeah, we calculated your mic time. You speak yeah. for all of 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah, exactly. What is this? It's ridiculous. Anyway, so I finished my national service um, in April of 92. Mm-hmm. In August, I'm going to start law school, my LLB. And then there's a brand new radio station. I literally walked in and I told them um, that I think the radio station had been up for about a, a month or two. Yeah. And I, wa- I literally walked in and said, um, I'd like to audition for a job. I've listened to some of you guys and... <laughs> I know I can kick the asses. I'm 18. Um, But I'd been doing mock radio shows since primary school. Really? So I probably put in my 10,000 hours before I even started radio. When you say mock radio shows... I'd record myself on a little tape recorder. That's incredible. uh, Like back announcing songs and just literally... Really? Mock radio shows. Yeah. So I, I literally walked in and they told me to do a demo. And I didn't do a demo because, I don't know, I was lazy. (laughs) <laughs> Two months later, I met one of the DJs who said, listen, come to studio and I'll do a live audition for you. So I walked in on the Monday. It was the last week of June 1992. I walked mm-hmm. in on the Monday, did my audition. On the Tuesday, they called me on the landline and they said, you start on Saturday. Jeez. Zero training. Straight in there. I walked in there. I kicked so much ass. The following year, <laughs> I, was, I, I was voted uh, Botswana's Lemon Twist Radio DJ of the Year. I don't, I'd only done it for 11 months. That's something else. And, and, and it's because I loved radio so much, and I'd listened to so many radio greats that I knew what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember even with my music collection, mm-hmm. because I was such a radio lover, when I was recording songs off the radio... I knew when to stop recording because I know he's about to speak. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, radio was so clinical back then. Yeah, yeah. And radio- well, you, had to, you had to stop talking before yes. the vocals and, kicked and, in and, on a song. And, and, and yeah. the basics of radio were actually a thing, yeah. unlike now. You had a clock. Where the basics of radio almost don't matter to these kids on radio right now, which is sad. But anyway, so, so that's how I started my radio career. Uh, well, and, and, you, and, then you didn't get a break. You, you made your own break. No, no, I made my own break. I yeah. made my own. And, and from there, I spent five years shipping demos to every single radio station I could. You know, from Metro to, I even sent to Radio Siskai, uh, oh. you know, trying to get in, in, into, you know, a bigger radio station. Yeah. A radio bop I sent to Josie FM, um, Radio Soweto. Not once did anyone respond. But every week I'd buy a cassette and 
make a demo. You know who was the only, there, there were two people who responded to me. The one was obviously John Burks when I, yeah. when I left campus radio. I was fired on campus radio. Doing like crazy <laughs> Where shit. weren't you fired? Yeah, of course. And then, and but John Burks was the one person I saw. And then the other, the only other person who ever replied to any of those things was Bob Mabena. Yeah. I've still got the letter you wrote. Well, I'm afraid we don't have anything open for you right now. Was this for 947? Yeah, back in the day. Do you know in 96, I gave Bob a demo to give to Metro for me? Yeah. I always tell him, I don't believe you gave them my demo because he knew I was going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but he took my demo though. He took my demo. Took he it. said that he did. Who was the manager at the time? Was it, I don't know if it was Kos Khadebe or, I'm trying to remember who I it can't was. I remember. I'm trying to remember. Doesn't matter. No one remembers it, it, management. It, it, it doesn't matter. But 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 um, yeah. I mean, Bob has always been the nicest guy. Like he's always had time for me, even when I was an up and coming kid wanting to get into the industry. He had time for me. Yeah, and he would reply. Like he, if you yeah. sent him a message, he'd reply to you no matter what. So Fatima wants to know. I mean, you told us how busy you are, but she says, "What is Fresh doing now?" <laughs> so this is probably Fatima, what you get. Like I, I got someone yesterday saying to me, "So what are you doing now?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, shit. Obviously, I haven't made enough noise." No. Yeah. You know what? It's never enough. Uh, it's never enough. I mean, the people who still think I'm at 5FM, believe it or not. <laughs> no, no, for real. The people who still think I'm at 5FM. Um, right now, I'm raising five kids. Um, that's a full-time job. That's a full-time job. Um, I started a podcast. It's called Wow, What a Week. Um, that's you, right. You can check it out on YouTube and all podcast um, channels. I'm working on a farming project in Botswana. Oh, really? Uh, because um, What are you guys farming there? Fresh no, we, we, we are literally doing a soil analysis as we speak wow. so that we know exactly what will work on that soil. So my grand wow. left us 18 hectares of land oh. when she passed away. Inherited to... wealth going on here in, in the Sikwane <laughs> oh, <laughs> family. <laughs> TJ Fresh, it's old money. <laughs> the Sikwane have got, yeah, they, they, these old are old but, money. It's like but, this, the, the, the Khabarone mafia. <laughs> but, they don't need the land back. They already have it. <laughs> In fact, we'll give you land, Gareth. Oh, thank you. you. I would appreciate that. Yeah, that would be good. So she, my grandmother passed away about 30 years ago and she left it for to my mother mm. because she had, my grandmother had 10 kids, bro. So yeah. my mom is one of 10, uh, 10 siblings. So she left, you know, land, mm. you know, for all her kids. So my mom has just been sitting on it and I told her, listen, let me do something with this. Right. And my dad initially about 20 years ago is like, no, don't worry. We got this. Now he's 80. He's like, okay, do what you want. To <laughs> he was ready for you to jump in and do it. It's hard, eh? Farming is it's a hard, intensive. It's become so technological now yeah, yeah. that it's not about just, you know, sow seeds and you have green thumbs and shit grows. Now it's, uh, if you watch these shows on these farmers, they yeah. have drones looking for pesticides. They have these machines that use lasers to take yeah. out bugs. I mean, but, it's insane. But also what I'm learning though is farming has come so far that you can do it as a first time farmer and do it right. But you have to stay the course though. Yeah. You have to stay the course. Yeah, right. So, 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 so yeah. So, so I'm, here's a, here's a, I'm, question. I'm a, I'm a boor in training. So yes. here's a question from Tabang, which I also get a lot of the time and I'd like you to answer it. He goes, when would Fresh come back to radio? Not if, but when, so that he could kick ass in the amateur stuff we're listening to now. So I was supposed to be back in April, like this past April. Um, and can you say where? Um, no, because we're still talking. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I was supposed to come back this past April, but because there's a project I'm starting in bots next month mm -hmm. or the month after, I won't be able to do a radio show because I'll literally be between countries for six months. So I won't be able to do radio, unfortunately. Right. So if it happens, it might be this coming April, if it happens. But the sad thing is, as much as I miss the radio impact that I have, I don't miss how much time it consumes. Because it's, it's when you're off radio that you realize how much of your life you dedicated to radio. Because especially when you're doing a drive show, you're on all the time. Yeah, You're thinking radio all the time. You're thinking content mm -hmm. all the time. You're thinking about tomorrow's show. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about last week's show. It's past, but you're not happy about how you did last week's show. Mm -hmm. So now that I don't have to think about all of that, yeah. I realize that it's a relief. I've got time. <laughs> I've got time on my hands. I released sure. an album the other day because I, I can be in studio now. Yeah. 
you know, so so it's it's yes, I miss radio and the fact that you've got a fan base that are waiting for you to serve them something. But I'm also enjoying the free time. Do you, ever, do, you, do you ever feel though that you've kind of been there, done that with a lot of this stuff? Because that's sometimes Be- sometimes how I feel about it. I'm I'm not nostalgic about radio. To tell you the honest truth, because it's something I love to death, <laughs> I'll only stop at death. Okay. I'll only stop loving right. it at death. Um, you know, people, especially, uh, you know, I always lament the fact that it's only in entertainment that people say to you, when are you going to retire and give other kids a chance? But I'm like, your mother is a teacher until she's 65. <laughs> exactly. W- why aren't you asking her that? You, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, there we so, go. so for me, I love this shit so much, bro, that I will do it for as long as my body will carry me. Also because I fully understand the impact that it has. And again, I'm about impact. I'm about, if it's not impactful, then don't do it. If it's not memorable, don't do it. If you're wasting the listener's time, don't do don't it. Don't do it. Um, so here's a, a story I, I want to bring in because this is the most frustrating thing I've ever heard. So investigations have shown a Pretoria man did not win a 42 million rand <laughs> lotto ticket. Did you see the story? Oh, that I sucks. put this up. This poor guy back in 2016... According to the acting public protector, Koleka Aleka, uh, Alex Magagula. Hold up, is she the same one they just said Cyril did nothing wrong? Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, I yeah, don't know yeah. if I can trust her. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Magagula said he bought a lotto ticket and in turn won the 42 million rand jackpot yeah. on the 9th of September 2016. The public protector said he went to redeem the ticket at a retailer in Pretoria. The lotto machine jammed. However, the lotto machine jammed while reading the ticket. Okay. He then went to another terminal at the Cineville post office the following day where he was paid 37 rand, <laughs> but the winning ticket was 42 million rand. So the public protector was appointed to step in after allegations that the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition failed to address their complaint. Now, this poor guy got 37 rand. Mm. He probably should have got... I don't, I don't know whether to what? believe him or not, but 42 million <laughs> rand is a big jump Talk about from 37 unlucky. rand. Yes, but man, why do we need the public protector to step in, though? I mean, surely I, there's a ticket with numbers on it. Right. What do the numbers say? Right. Do they correlate with the little hey, bo- bollockies that back came out? the money. <laughs> we're back here again. I, I feel like we're... we're, we're Give we're, this guy the money. No, but at context, context, this happened, what, 2016? So, there is, so? A time, there is a time limit. And the guy had the money, and he, tra- he did try to go off the YouTuber and whatnot. But then he failed because he didn't have the money to fight the juggernaut. So that's when the public protector had to step in. Does he have a winning ticket? Oh, well, he, did says, he, try, he says he had the winning ticket, got jammed in the machine. But he does. But we don't know about the machine now. Like, <laughs> So when they unjammed it, what is, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. I just know I'd be hugely pissed off. 37 rides. Yeah, hey, for... Imagine watching the lotto that night before, like, ding, ding, so, ding. What do you what do you make of all this nonsense that's going on in the world now? Because everything's so polarized now. Mm. Everybody has to have an opinion about everything, right? So someone brings up climate change and it's now huge controversy. And for some yep. people, if you say X, you must be ignored because you're obviously a lunatic. COVID was another one. Mm. I mean, during mm. that whole thing, I was very, very unimpressed with the way that the whole world was dealing with it. Mm. And in Probably retros- so. in retrospect, I think a lot of us were right. Mm. Some people were wrong. I still I still think that there's probably a lot of investigation. Some some people need to be fired or sued or something for their terrible decisions during that time. Or put down. Or put down. Crime because because honestly, the, the economy is still suffering and reeling from mm-hmm. all of that stupidity. I mean, you know, the entertainment industry took a massive knock. You must have looked at it. And it was also at the time of all the other shit going on with you. You must have looked at it and thought, I'm fucked. I remember, right? I remember um, when the ridiculous tobacco ban happened. <laughs> I remember I tweeted about it. You tweeted about it. Uh-huh. And I've got a friend who's like deep in the ANC. Uh-huh. And he was telling me that they had a consultant, um, a social media consultant, uh-huh. who told them that uh, Gareth Cliff and Fresh have been paid by the tobacco lobby to tweet about oh, how really? ridiculous this tobacco ban was. Did you get some tobacco and, m- and, lobby and, money? Because I didn't. And what oh, because I was going to want to. And, I was going to want to share. And what upset me is not the lie. But the fact that I actually needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> and you wish the tobacco mafia came for you. And the sad thing is, when you look at tobacco sales right now, majority of what people are smoking is contraband. 
mm-hmm. and stuff sold off the back of trucks. Mm-hmm. Exactly as we predicted would happen during that ridiculous tobacco ban. Because if I smoke, I will find smokes, whether they're well, legal we saw or it, not. Like, this is the great thing about South Africa. Yeah. And everybody was complaining about, oh, it's so terrible, these bans. And I suddenly looked around me and I thought, look at all these people who found ways around the rules. Yeah. We don't care in this country. And mm. you can complain and you can go, oh, well, it's corruption. And, but it's what kind of example do our leaders set for us, for starters? Second of all, why should we always carry the can as ordinary citizens? Yeah. Why should we have to pay the taxes, be pulled over by the cops, have all the trouble that we have? They know where we live. They know where to get us if they need, if they need to get us. But the people who do the really bad things go to Dubai and live in, you know, billion dollar houses or, or get redeployed and become ambassadors somewhere or get redeployed and become <laughs> ambassadors but i realized that south africans are hugely resourceful like the mm, townships crafty. never ever took any of that lockdown shit seriously yeah, i remember yeah. reversing my car into an unnamed shop where they packed boxes of liquor <laughs> into the back for me because i had some friends around that weekend and i was not going to follow their stupid rules and you couldn't find pineapples and they, but they made it look uh, they couldn't find pineapples <laughs> But they made it look like it, I bought Omo or something, you know, <laughs> sealed the boxes up and everything. Yeah. South Africans are so resilient. We are so resourceful. We're so clever about breaking rules and making it work, not necessarily for bad things, mm, mm. but just to keep things going, to put food on the table, to make sure that things happen in the household. So, so like, to throw to Fresh's point about the runway, right? Mm. So if South Africans are this resourceful in an un like what do you call it, the environment? Teach is not... some, just teach him some mic technique there, please. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, it's it so that... if you speak into the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Joe Fresh. <laughs> you just got a, a masterclass. Oh, you, oh. you owe him 20 grand. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'll get the tobacco industry to, 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 pay, yeah, to back pay you. They though. didn't pay me, so you, you, you yeah. better pay me. Yeah. No, no, if South Africans are this resourceful in an unresourceful like nation and mm. we are this what do you call it, resource starved. Imagine what we would get if we had the runway, if our politicians got the so, shit together, if our country had these things, because we are really crafty. We are really... Yeah. So this is what Fresh and I were talking about yeah. during the break, actually. We were saying there was a point in this country's trajectory where we were headed for... We were being, the beacon. ...being a major global competitor. No, easily the greatest nation in the world. 6% yeah. growth easily. in our economy. Everyone wanted to be us. Everyone wanted to be with us. We had Nelson Mandela around. We had, <laughs> no, but I mean, he was a, he was a force in the world, right? Mm. And South Africa was held up as this example of, look what can happen if you don't choose conflict, like the Russians yeah, and exactly. Ukrainians have unfortunately found themselves in. Look at what we've got here. And people were hopeful and they were... They were investing and they were building businesses and they were doing cool things. And I just remember everything around being tremendously positive. And then somehow we just hit the skids along the way. And we don't often talk about serious shit because mm-hmm. you and I mostly prefer to laugh. Yeah. But this is something that really has happened in South Africa and we need to take stock of. But what do we do to fix the mess? Can we do anything to fix the mess? I mean, the fact that people are still voting the same for me is already a problem. Yeah. Because then it says maybe we're not learning our lessons hard enough that we keep saying, no, give them another chance. Give them another chance. To what no, no, end? no, but there to is, what end there is an that? abuse culture there, like where, where you kick the dog and it always comes back to you, right? Mm-hmm. And you kick it harder to see how yeah. far they are. That's what the ANC does to us. There is an abuse culture. There is a... And, oh, and Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get me... That's, this is why I stopped watching South African football. <laughs> this is why the only South African person I support is Drickers Duplessy, people. You, you know, walking into your studios and seeing your colors, you actually triggered me because I'm like, I'm a Chiefs fan and your colors right. are black, black, and, and, black and yellow. Yeah. Like a similar to mm-hmm. like... So, yeah but but you know just to to what you were saying earlier on about how we now live in a world where you're not allowed not to have an opinion mm-hmm. especially if you're a person with a profile or even half a profile like if if someone posts something about the plight of the parktown prawn mm-hmm. like gareth why have you said nothing about the parktown prawn? right like, why the fuck can't i not have an opinion <laughs> but have you found yourself uh stepping off the gas on some subjects you're just like i, I don't need to get involved in this one majority of especially on twitter where you can't even say i love apples because someone from the orange it's lobby is, is going to say <laughs> what of, oh, but what's wrong orange. with oranges yeah. <laughs> you, you, because right. i mean that's how ridiculous that the discourse has become that you're not allowed not to have an opinion if someone has passed away why have you not said rest in peace aka i literally got that 
Really? So, 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 you know, someone said that Does to that me mean on, fresh hated on, on yeah. someone said that to me on uh, Instagram. Like, why have you not said uh, rest in peace? Eh? I was like, why do I need to display grief publicly to you? I might for even, it to exist? I might even know this guy a lot better than you think. And I might actually want to say a whole lot more, yeah. but it's none of your business. And 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 also because I reached a point where I stopped posting anything about someone that's passed away especially, you know, within the industry, hmm. uh, you know, where there was like a Jamie Bartlett. I mean, I'd, I, had a, yeah. I had a great re- relationship with Jamie Bartlett, but I posted nothing about his passing away because public displays of grief are not necessarily proof of anything. Mm. You know, oh, if, if I'm virtue more, signaling. What, what they are proof of is precisely what Bakugantu's yes. has just said now. It's, yes. it's proof that, that some person who has no relationship with that person can get some cheap points yeah. yes. by looking like they're really sad about something. And it helps if they have a picture with them. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. That's great. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I sometimes have to look through our pictures when it comes to someone dying. And then I realize, like, I'm not going to put a picture of me with this person up yeah. every time someone's mm-hmm. dead. It's mm-hmm. horrible. What a horrible reason to take a picture with anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, so, so I'm at a point where I'm okay with people thinking I might not give a damn about something. Because it's your problem, not mine. Hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't have to post about it for it to exist. You know, uh, I don't post that I go to the pool. Are you going to assume I don't pool? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so so I, I'm, I'm, I, I now treat social media as I will post what I want when I want, and if I don't post it, then you know, fuck it, whatever. But you've also but been, you're not putting me under pressure to have an opinion about something. You've been quite like good about not. There's there's a line with you, I think. I don't know where it is, but mm. there's a line somewhere where you're like, not my family, mm. not my. Uh, personal feelings on some important issues that mm. you, you just you have a there's a there's a certain thing that you don't I cross keep, i keep it superficial right i keep it very superficial right but i'm not gonna post my kids on social media right. they'll they'll post themselves when they're when old they're ready. enough when they're old enough to post themselves on social media they'll do that and that's always been a line that i've drawn from the minute i came into this industry i mean i remember if every, every pregnancy um, um, top billing would say, can we come and uh, do a nursery <laughs> for you and do a whole, I was like, no, you're not coming into my house. No, they wanted to come and redo my uh, one room in my house. I'm like, I don't know. I've seen what you people put on TV. I don't want you in my fucking house. <laughs> so here's an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, Slippery Pickle says, ask Fresh about the alien thing. I saw some rock art of UFOs when I was in Botswana. Maybe he knows more. I know nothing, Slippery Pickle. <laughs> no, but, but... Oh, no, but he's been sworn to secrecy. Old money. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the mafia, remember? <laughs> no, but uh, this alien thing is getting crazy. And I joked with Bhagavanta just yesterday mm. on the show about how it feels to me like there's a lot of crazy shit going on in the world right now. We need... They need it's coming to a head. Something's going to happen, right? Whether it's that war, World War Three breaks out, which I don't want to happen. Or if it's just the aliens who are going to finally announce themselves and go, hey, listen, you were all just a big psyop. Everything, yeah. everything that's been going around. If, if you look up R&D. there, there's a hidden camera there. Yeah, exactly. You've been, <laughs> you've been shocked. It's the You've Truman Show. It's yeah. the Truman Show. You've been shocked. <laughs> Leon Schuster comes out through. Is it not wild, though, that there's a war happening in Europe and the world is just carrying on? But what's even wilder is the fact that Everyone is sending Ukraine all of these big bombs and guns yeah. to use against Russia. They just sent them cluster bombs. Yeah. Biden just signed to send, I think it was 34,000 cluster bombs. You know what those do? And cluster bombs are like herpes. They uh, might show up five years later. That's right. And they, and they mostly hurt civilians. It's exactly. not, they're not used in and war. The, and, five and, years and the, later. And the, sto- right. and the story that was put out was that Vladimir Putin has stockpiling and is willing to use cluster bombs. And what? But... America is not, we weren't told that America sent out cluster bombs. No, you, you, are, you are now. That's yeah. what's happening. Exactly. So, so my question is, at what stage is Russia not going to say, you guys arming these people is you essentially being a part of this war. Mm-hmm. So fuck all of you. Right. At what Nuke stage time. is it going to get to that? Because it's almost like everyone is scared of one another's red button, yeah, but it's, it's there. Well, it used it's, to be the, the fear of mutually assured yeah, sure, destruction. destruction. Mad, yeah. the yeah. mad policy. Right. Right. Yeah. But now I don't know if that counts so much because now I think the more we, the more we just allow this war to go on and we don't give both Putin and Zelensky a chance to get out because mm-hmm. that's what we need now. Need both of them yeah. and both of them would take it. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even Trump the other day was saying, <laughs> "I just don't want any more people." 
dying. Okay. And the woman was like, but do you want Ukraine to win or Russia to win? He goes, it's not about winning, which is the only time he's ever said that. He goes, it's about people dying. And I was like, you know what? Actually, good point. Good point, yeah, Donald Trump. Yeah. He's making a very solid point. The worst point. person in the world made a good point. <laughs> and and I, I don't understand why we don't just create the conditions where these guys can sit around a table and figure a way out. So, you know, we'll sort out the Crimea, uh, these these other uh, provinces, these mm. areas of Ukraine that you want to Donetsk and Luhansk and all the rest of it. Let's figure it out. Like, why, why are but, the adults but, in the room? But we talked about this the other week, Gareth, when we said it is a proxy war between America. It's a cold war. And Putin, all Putin wants is a boundary that they set after the Soviet Union fell. That don't enter the zone. With and NATO. Amer yeah, with NATO. <clears throat> and right. NATO kept, kept on violating it with, without putting boots on the zone. Like, and they would, kept on saying... How would the U.S. feel and I know how you can answer this because there was a historical precedent for this. I was when, gonna say, the, when Russia put the Cuban, missiles the in Cuba, Cuba, in Cuba. Yeah, how did they the, feel about it? Well, they said, if you do this, yeah. it's all out war. Exactly. exactly. And the Bay of Pigs invasion happened. And then, of course, John F. Kennedy was shot, shot. shortly after that. <laughs> but there's a lot of history there that already the Americans should know from precedent. Exactly. So to Fresh's point, how is arming Ukraine, sending funds, sending, how is that different than sending a physical soldier? Yeah, they it's, are it's, fighting it's, the it's, war. It's, it's the it thing. is a war between Russia and America. And, and, and I'm saying, and the Ukraine is yeah. a pawn in this. Yeah, and, and I'm saying, it, you know, the, the the two big boys are almost afraid of one another, but they don't know how to either let's talk it out or fuck it, let's fight. Oh, well, wait, here's well, a reference close to fresh uh, in Botswana: elephants. When elephants stomp, <laughs> the grass suffers. Right, yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you so you shoot one of the. <laughs> <laughs> so you shoot one of the elephants. There can't be two bulls in a crowd. <laughs> Somebody needs to press the button. Um, I can't take you guys. Sanele, Sanele, Sanele also wants to throw this in because, I mean, we haven't really spoken about the rest of your team from mm, the 5FM mm. days, but Poppy, uh, you can count her in. She'll come back from wherever she is. Duran sold the toy shop, so he's available. Uh, but Mash, how do you forget the mother of everything? Catherine Grenfell. Are you still oh, in contact okay. with all of them? I haven't spoken to Kath in a while. Uh, myself and Duran co-owned a sausage saloon oh, really? at Carnival City. <laughs> really? So we were, yeah, we <laughs> were. Sausage saloon. saloon. Uh, it sounds good. You need to explain that. You need to explain that. <laughs> you're a real entrepreneur. I mean, getting into a, a farming, a, a takeaway business. It was, it was, it was, it was a headache because a couple of years later, then COVID hit. Oh man! Mm. Yeah, then we're stuck with all these sausages. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sausage party. It was a sausage fest. So I felt like I was at a stag party. <laughs> but back, but fresh. How do you feel about stealing uh, Mendoza? Mendoza did this before. Before you, <laughs> he did sausage before you. He did Ma championship burro wash. Shame on Mendoza. Mendoza. Oh yes, another he great. Did. He did championship burro wash. Yes, we'll we'll and didn't they? Uh, I mean, with they, Nathaniel, they, right? They, Nathaniel from Checkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's got brothers. Yeah. I had a really interesting dinner one night with Nathaniel and Rian van Heerden. Oh, wow. And Nathaniel had a chef at his house to cook yes. for us. Yeah. And it was just I'd like one of those nights where you actually you pinch yourself afterwards. You're like, I was sitting here listening to these two hilarious human beings. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I said anything, but I just laughed from beginning to end of that whole dinner. It was hilarious. And I got into my car afterwards. I was like, did that really happen? It's it, weird when these things happen. So, You've met people. So is that Nathaniel's voice or did he break voice? At the, no, no, no. The, the whole time he talked like this. Oh, so he didn't break character. Ach, nee, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop talking about politics or cock in my pants. I love it. Like him. that. He's I so love great. Him. I love He's him. So great. I didn't Rian give you your start, Gareth, speaking about starts. No, well, yeah, Rian, so Rian hired me as a DJ. Funnily enough, I think I'm on his show, his TV show on, yeah. on CakeNet this week. Mm. I mean, only a few people I'll do interviews mm. with. You're yeah. one of them. He's one of them. The rest, I, I don't really know that I would. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he's doing this lot aunt mit Rian or something. Yeah. So he sits you down. He's got a restaurant as well. Yeah, yeah. Sits you down and then he you know, talks to you for an hour. And then he's got a surprise guest, which is kind of what we had this morning with <laughs> sure, you. Sure. And um, I think I'm on this week, but I'll find out and let everybody know. Who was your Afrikaans? Uh, <laughs> it's sort of hard. You know, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed because it should be better. My Afrikaans really should be better. Um, the checkers ads were legendary, says someone about Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody says, did you and Duran eat all the sausages? I think that, that's Sanele again trying all, to be all, all the stock. 
Yeah, yeah no, listen. I think, I think but a did lot you, of it did went you off. sell it? Did you sell it? I'm, you I'm trying to remember how we dealt with the, the, the COVID disaster because obviously, you know, people couldn't, couldn't go anywhere. Go into casino, no. and we're in a casino. Right, so you're dependent and, on foot traffic. And, it's and, not as if people are ordering on Uber Eats. And also, <laughs> when you're selling hot dogs, yeah. nobody leaves home to go to a casino For just a hot to dog. get a hot dog. No. We we count on the footfall <laughs> at the casino For sure. to make a sale. Right. So, so, so we were up against uh, quite a bit. Mm. But, but you know what? It was a good ride. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, yeah, do it again. Now, what do you say to people who, who tell you that you should stay in your lane when it comes to stuff like that? Because, you know, you hear these things, especially on, on the internet again, that, that toilet of Twitter. They go, ah, oh, Fresh, what are you doing owning a sausage saloon? Mm. Stay in your lane. But who, who decided, I mean, who became the lane police? <laughs> that, and, and, you know, it's insane how, for instance, they'll say yeah. to Gareth, um, what do you know about politics? Yeah. Stay in your lane. Yeah, yeah. Why do you even have an opinion? But an 18-year-old has an opinion because they get to vote. Right. So are you saying to 18-year-olds then stay in your and lane? Also like, what but, do you know about politics? But, but politics is a, is a anyone can join in. It's, like a, it, it's a very low barrier to entry. Yeah. Owning yeah. a sausage saloon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story. I mean, you really have to know about fucking <laughs> hot dogs, you know? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was reading a funny post the other day uh, about uh, how um, they, they tell you about how a degree is important yeah. Um, well, what did you say? Let me let me actually find the post. <laughs> That's because hilarious. I have to read it as is. Uh, so so Mig says I don't speak Afrikaans, but I'm fluent in Kak Afrikaans <laughs> or Kak I can't even say that properly. Uh, fresh and tato in the morning. How my parents allowed me to listen to that on my way to school is schooling. Wow, yeah, that's uh, let's all know. Dude, uh, that was the breakfast show I did at uh, YFM Correct. Uh, with Tato. And it was some of the craziest radio I have ever done. It was incredible. It was liberating. It was, we, it, it's, it, geez, bro. And I think in the process, about three radio stations changed breakfast shows. To counter you. I, I can tell you to confidently. Do something, yeah. I can tell you confidently that Kaya changed breakfast, I think, twice. Right. While we were there, Metro changed breakfast also. And I suspect 2000 also did that. No, no, you guys were you were destroying things. No, no, we kicked so much ass, brah, mm. that to this day, people still talk about it. We have captains of industry. I would who, say that that's probably where, where Y was at its absolute peak. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I, I, I'd say when we were at five, that was when it was, it was absolutely, <laughs> seems to be a trend here. It's not me. It's fresh. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. We, we have something in common. G. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. Please, please, please make fresh a permanent feature. Well, he's got his own podcast. You can find it on all the podcast servers and we'll but put I also all need info. a job. I need an income. You know, podcasts don't make money. So oh, no, okay, it it can we afford fresh? You can, can, can barely afford me. Dude, I'll doesn't. do it for coffee right now. Um, <laughs> Is it possible that Fresh will collaborate with Glenn Lewis? They produced an amazing album together. Oh, yes. Uh, Gate Crusher meets Africa was an incredible album. Mm. And um, we'd, I, th I think we should do, we should do a, a part two. That would be the cool. Truth. Yeah, I mean, you, you're putting all the, the, the other stuff on, on yeah. Spotify and on Apple Music now. In fact, so there was a perceived rivalry between myself and Glenn because mm. he did Afternoons on Metro. That's I was right. doing Afternoons at Y. So people thought like we hated each other. And we decided, fuck it, we're going to do an album together. And <laughs> that you must know, have confused all the and, and, all and, the haters. <laughs> and, 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 and capitalize on yeah. what people think is a beef. And um, that album did incredibly well. Okay, I found the post. Okay. In Africa, a degree is only important when you don't have it. When you get it, you hear masters is more important. Huh? <laughs> After getting masters, you hear again PhD is important test. After that. A Form 2 dropout is elected as your mayor. And here, it's not about the papers. Leaders are born and not made. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. There's no qualification that to become so president. Right. And, and I, I, you know, I can't help feeling sorry for so many people who line up at the beginning of every year mm. and who fight for a place at a university. Yeah. And who are desperate for a bursary, and their parents are desperate for them to get in there because they think that's the meal ticket. This is the our way out of poverty. Mm. And these people end up with a degree, a whole lot less money because their parents have put everything into this, sold debt. everything, yeah. right? They put the one kid through varsity, and then the kid can't get a job mm. after they've got the degree. Mm. And you're mm. like, wow, this is th these people are selling some bullshit. In fact, um, you know, I think it's one thing everyone said when they were shutting down all these TVET colleges, what, almost 20 years ago. 
that what are you doing? I mean, we should be creating kids that can be their own bosses. Their mm. own, and, and, and skills. Too. And How skills. about some skills? You know, you're talking about like going back to, to bots to farm that piece of land that you yeah. guys have got. And you talk about running a, a, a takeaway place, for example. Mm. I mean, these are skills that yeah. you need. They're not sure. degrees. There's no MBA in the world that's going to be able to cross over between DJing, producing albums, farming, running, yep. all the other businesses that mm, you've run. Mm, that, mm. What that requires is like a set of skills and also adaptability to change. Absolutely. Seeing opportunities and getting involved. If I pick up my phone right now and I call a plumber or an electrician, mm -hmm. nine out of 10 times, it'll be a Zimbabwean plumber or electrician. Or Nigerian. Or Nigerian. Yeah. Okay, I haven't or, had a Nigerian plumber Or an plumber old yet. man. Or an old Afrikaans man. man yeah, yeah, that's it. That's but, it. But, and um, more often than not, um, these artisans from Zim will tell you that half of this I learned in high school. Yeah, or I learned out of high school. But by the time I was two years out of high school, I could fix shit and make shit. Mm. And make money for myself. There was a time when South Africans knew how to hotwire a car. They don't even know how to do that anymore. <laughs> they, they knew how to bridge, like to bridge electricity. We weren't having yeah. fires yes, because absolutely. they knew how to bridge electricity. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wait, you know who who could make a great carpenter in fresh? Mm -hmm. uh, Julius Malema. <laughs> he did no, he work. did very bad at woodwork <laughs> in in school. But it's also amazing how in South Africa we've got this. Um, we've got such a cult of personality too. Like when Jacob Zuma was the president, then everything that was right or wrong was his fault mm -hmm. or his responsibility mm -hmm. um it seems like whenever you bring up people like julius or you or me or i don't know who else is 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 kind of a, a regular go-to in mm -hmm. south africa Those are, to. But, well give yourself a <laughs> little bit of a runway here yeah, but, burn a couple of bridges yeah, first you, you actually got to get into some trouble before you can say that um but you know there are these people who just seem to be uh instantly and julius really is one of them and he's done a good job of this i remember one of the reasons that it was a good time to get out of the SABC mm. was because they wouldn't let me interview him. He mm. just launched the EFF. Mm. Remember, this is 2014. Yeah, yeah. And it was election year. And they said, no, you can't interview him. I was like, what? That's when you realize the SABC is state news. Yeah. I was like, no, no, that's not good. It wasn't the reason, but it was one of them. In, in, Obviously, in, they can't give that the official in, in reason. In fact, when I, was, when I was at Metro, and, then, and, and I told them at the time when I agreed to move from Five to Metro, mm -hmm. was that, you guys need to interfere less. Right. And one of the people that we want to interview is Julius. Mm -hmm. And we are going to interview Julius. We want to interview. Um, and, and because we don't agree with people, it doesn't mean we must silence them or shut them up. No, off. in fact, that's even more reason to talk to them, right? And, and, absolutely. And that's so, always been your philosophy too, is if you, exactly. if you don't understand someone, if you don't like someone, or you think that you shouldn't like someone, get them in, talk to them. Be surprised how much you have in common. But now we, you know, we live in a world where we feel certain people should not be given, you know, the, 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 must be canceled. the, the light of day, yeah. simply because we don't agree with them. Like, what kind of world are we living in where we feel, because I don't agree with Gareth, well, no one should hear him out. I think it's a world where a lot of kids haven't been told no by their parents. Oh, yeah, there's also that. That's what that is. Yeah. I think it's a lot of people who are at university. And I remember, this comes from America. Mm. Because well, you get a participation medal. Well, yeah, but a lot <laughs> of kids... I'm on this. Uh, a Gareth lot of kids, knows yeah. I hate the hate body generation. A, a, a lot of these kids are like, um, well... I don't see why I have to be uncomfortable. Mm. So the, the, the minute you even say, and I mean, this is the most stupid thing, but if you go, well, you know, I don't know about uh, animal conservation. I'm not mm. that big on rhino conservation. Mm. I don't think it's the most important thing. And I'm sorry, this conversation is making me very uncomfortable, yeah. which means I that person like... has decided that they think their discomfort is a reason for you to stop talking. It's your responsibility or, now. Or not just stop talking, to withhold your opinion on a yeah. bunch of things. Yeah. And in fact, actually, actually change your opinion. Yeah. Change your opinion. Because if you shut up, that means Correct. you complicitly agree. But if you change your opinion, they want Gareth to say, I like the rhinos. Right. They don't want Gareth to not be to be mum about the rhinos or to say, I hate the rhinos. Well, they want you to be another rhino. So another reason that, and it's, it's Mandela Day today, so I suppose it's an appropriate thing to talk about. Another reason that it was a good time to get out of radio for me. And mm. you're reminding me of all this stuff now, which I haven't thought about in ages. I apologize. In the, no, in, in <laughs> PTSD. So, so Madiba died in December 2013. And then in January 2014, I started talking to Zelda, whose name mm. has also come up a little bit earlier, mm. and to friends of ours in New York about doing an international tribute to him. Yeah. And I remember we organized for the Soweto Gospel Choir, for Morgan Freeman, for Bill Clinton, 
and for a lot of other U.S. politicians who you know were big fans of of Nelson Mandela's to to meet up in in New York mm -hmm. for a special service where you know we people would just give thanks kind of you know to to honor him to mm -hmm. to pay tribute. Bill Clinton gave the most amazing speech. I was up there reading with Morgan Freeman from Long Walk to Freedom, which is just like mind blowing because Morgan mm. Freeman's the voice of God, right? God, yes, literally yes. God. And yes, I stood so up much. there and, and two weeks before that or three weeks before that, we'd said to the management at five, we'd like, we're going to do this great thing, which involves these massive, massive names. Don't mm. you want to get involved? Why don't you, let's set up a studio and yeah. I can do shows from there. Exactly. Or whatever. Yeah. Well, we don't really know if that's like what our target market is. Yeah. Can you imagine? I was like, are you people high on drugs? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it drugs? Is it crack? And, and, and Rena and I sat in a cheesecake shop in New York and we we're like, nah, we need to get out of there. It's time. And these are the same people, remember Gareth, that had said to us even like a year or two before Madiba passed away that there's a Madiba passing away plan. Mm -hmm. as, oh, no, we had as audio. Most, as most in broadcasters fact, did. In fact, you and I we were called into a meeting for that. And we were, we were up at 3 a.m. on that morning. So you, we, you'd started yeah, so, the so show. So we were told in the event that Madiba passes away, this is a year or two before he passed away already. Yeah, yeah. They're already planning that this is what happens. There was a package. The event that yeah. 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 Like, like the yeah. Queen yeah. stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, you, you know, yourself and Gareth are our senior broadcasters. So the minute Madiba passes away, one of you has to come in immediately. Mm. So I remember I was doing a gig in Pretoria. <laughs> I was doing one in four ways. <laughs> and <laughs> the phone starts ringing and it's our manager. I was like, Fuck, is the old the man is gone. God, yeah. And no, no, I, I knew it because she's never called me that late. Mm. And I was like... She'd never stayed up that late. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so. <laughs> yeah, she was a bit of a mother grundy. So, you know, by seven, yeah. you knew she'd be, she, she'd be asleep. So I got the call and I was like, okay, Madiba's gone. And I answered it. Um, I turned on the studio monitor and she said, you need to come in. Madiba's gone. We, uh, you and Gareth are going to have to carry yeah. the next six hours or six or eight hours of the broadcast. So I literally stopped the music. I told everyone in the club I ruined that night. Uh, guys, Madiba's gone, and so am no, I. I did the same thing. And I left. Yeah, and, I saw, yeah. <laughs> and I left. Yeah, I remember saying like exactly that over the mic, and then I got I hopped in my car, and you yeah. were you were already there doing yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. And then I took over like two hours later, and we carried on until I don't know nine ten in the morning. It was rough, but it was. I but, mean, but, there but was so much. The, but these are the same people then that want us to be the very next year to carry this. Yeah but they don't see the benefit of no. you doing OBs from New York. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It, but, but also, don't forget, a lot of the management we deal with are, if it's not my idea, it's not a good idea kind of managers. I think that's, so, so you're dealing with that I also. I don't think that's just a radio thing. I think there are a lot of people. I mean, look at the guy with the please call me, uh, you know, at Vodacom. This poor man has been fighting with <laughs> Vodacom for I mean, poor, the poor guy, he's honestly, he's been at it for like, what, 12, Wait, since, 14 since years now. Quasi poor motherfucker. And he still hasn't got his deal with it yeah. because they keep offering him too little. And they took the money and, when and, it was and, there. And shamelessly so. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm not on their side. Mm, mm, and if mm. you think about how many companies in South Africa take ideas from the little people, mm, mm. implement them and go, oh, that was such a great idea. There's definitely a promotion in the pipeline for you somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere in the next year or two. But no disclosure of how nah. long this pipeline is. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, that's how, that's, you know? how, that's how it works. So. I suppose you also have you, to, at that point, realize like it's time to do your own thing. Yeah, mm. but like yeah, you either be the wood or the fire. Hmm. Look at you dropping pearls of wisdom this morning. <laughs> you really are. I think, you, I think you've upped your game just because Fresh is yeah. here today. Oh, that's no, no, I have happened. to impress. I think, I think you had a charka <laughs> briquette for fucking breakfast. So do you ever get time off? Because you're busy the whole time, dude. Do you ever get to just do nothing and enjoy yourself? And what do you do when you enjoy yourself? So I, it's, 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 it's weird. I do what I love when I enjoy myself. So time off for so you me. You work all the time. So time off for me is punishment because <laughs> then I've stopped doing what right. feeds my soul. So um, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, my office have been, because last year was such a busy year, hmm. they've been hounding me to take uh, time off. Um, so the um, Club Med Seychelles said, listen, we'd like to send you to our Club Med. Take, oh, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Take, take, I don't know how you could have accepted such so, an invitation. So take, take a week off. <laughs> All you have to do is post a couple of posts about sure. our, our resort. I almost turned it down because we record our podcast every Thursday. And my office are like, fuck that shit. We're going to pre-record the following week and you're going away for a week. <laughs> you so, would rather have done the show. So, so my office forced wow. me to take a week off 
But even when I was there, I, I felt mm. so. I was at gym every morning and evening because I'm a creature of habit. Yeah. So don't take the shit I love from me. Even you, if you go twice a day. I was on an island doing nothing. So. Right. Uh, but I had to go twice a day. Wow. We're having meals and sex. Yeah. Oh, such That's torture. Like, he was so on an I, island. No, but, no, but I, I kind of get this because I just, I went on a, a little trip with some friends now and I suddenly realized I, 10 days is too much for me. Yeah. I, I need a maximum five day yeah. break and then I'm ready to get back in. Exactly. I don't yeah. like being away for so long. I'm, I'm, I'm also that guy. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's very difficult. So someone here, uh, Robin says, I will never forget listening to you guys on that morning uh, with Madiba, obviously, driving around with tears. I think it, you know, this is why it's nice to sit and catch up with you because we don't get time to do this. Mm, mm. And even though this morning has been a little too nostalgic for my life, <laughs> I think you said it just now. You said nostalgia is, is important to people. And right now, nostalgia is the coolest thing. For majority of people who are still recovering from the trauma mm -hmm. of COVID or whatever other trauma that they've had to deal with, nostalgia for a lot of those people is all they have right now. Um, the good old days, memories of when things were better, memories of when I actually had a job, mm -hmm. you know, memories of, you know, before mom or dad passed away from COVID. I mean, even if when, when you look at music sales and music streaming um, um, stats, the biggest streaming artists generally over the last three, four years is catalog. Yeah, It's music that's 10, 15, 20 years old. That's why a lot of these big artists can come to South Africa and fill up an arena. Yeah. Because it's right. nostalgia. That's right. I it's, mean, yeah. it's you know, you've got uh, you know, major, major artists who are who are hot right now who can't sell out a stadium and then you, you get the backstreet boys. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> we rolled them out. You couldn't get a ticket, right? In fact, there's a thing <laughs> where people will say, for instance, uh, why is Tamiya, why do these American artists like Why is Tamiya? Robin S. Yeah. still one of the best songs to play in a club? Exactly. Right? And, and I'll yeah. never forget you saying that. You and, just pull out the Robin S. when the, the crowd looks like they're fading a little bit. Exactly. Um, <laughs> you get to show me love. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and and I always argue that we can complain all we want about all these so-called washed-up American artists coming here mm. for an easy paycheck. Yeah. But you need to remember that your average 40, 50, and 60-year-old, for them, that's a concert I want to go to because yeah. it reminds me of when I was younger. So, I mean, where should we in our age go? Who should we watch on stage? it will inadvertently be an artist that was big 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, that's right. It's definitely be an artist from now. But that's also why people want uh, you at the, at, the, at the gig that they're going to. Yeah. That's exactly. what they want. They, yeah. You make them feel good. They come out of there going, oh, man, that was fantastic. Yeah. It reminded me of the good times. Absolutely. Right. So, so nostalgia might be cheesy, but mm -hmm. it's also a, a comfort for people. It's like comfort eating. Yeah, yeah. Nostalgia is one hell of a drug. But like the last time I think I was listening to you guys speak like this was what peer conversations when you guys had the round oh, table yeah. with all the broadcasters. This is this has been cool. Well, Parallel As, Parking says DJ Fresh is the guest of the year so far. Thank you for coming into the studio. I couldn't say it better. Oh, wow. Thanks, I, I am. Thank you very much. Yeah, you really were. Yeah, this listen. was a masterclass. Now imagine if I'd slept. <laughs> I did this with no sleep. <laughs> uh, you, you, you are a true professional. You are a true professional. Uh, DJ Fresh, everybody, what a win to have him in the studio today. Uh, what a special surprise for me. And uh, well done to the team for setting this up. And thank you for staying up all week. <laughs> Jeez, dude. <laughs> the last time. Days. Oh, wait, can I pitch something here? Uncancelled with DJ Fresh. Uh, well, this is a, this is it. This, this kind is of it. taking the place of this. This is yeah, it. This is uh, no, enough. this is this is. Uh, we just we spent two hours. It feels like fifteen minutes. <laughs> it does. I'm looking at my watch, and there's like two minutes to go. I'm like, shit, is it time up I already? Know. I know. Yeah. In fact, I'm off to studio from uh, from here. I'm going into studio, uh, working on the next album already. You see, uh, because there's music to make. There's stuff. You're a machine, dude. I love what I do. It I shows. love what I do, it shows. And, and 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 don't try and stop me from doing what I do. But but you are lucky to be. You're not lucky. Mm. There's an intersection of three mm. things here. Yeah, you love what you do. Yeah, you're really good at what you do, and people will pay you for what you do. Thank you very That's much. That's the best place to be. What's it called? Ikigai. Yeah, something like something, that. Something Ikigai like that. is that Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, dude. What a pleasure.
Have an awesome, awesome week, so and we you've you made mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> Gareth refuses. Hell no. Rick Gareth no. refuses. I know where to draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> who's on next? Uh, there's, there's no, there's no lineup here, but there's so what, lots coming up. We are bad with lines, dude. We, we, we fail to even snort lines. But, uh, I know. <laughs> we're pathetic. But, but DJ Fresh, you said you had a podcast. Just drop it for the people. Oh, uh, it's called uh, Wow, uh, W A W. Uh, what a week! And um, oh, like yeah. I said, it's on YouTube. You can, uh, in fact, our guest on. Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, we're recording Thursday. It goes out on Friday. Um, from the industry, married, but he's on separation, and he'll be announcing on our show Ooh. that the marriage is over. Oh wow! Um, and if you and, ever wanted a trailer, and and they've been loved by a lot of people as a couple, oh. but um, yeah, so he's been kicked out of the house, sure. and he wants to talk about it on our podcast, so you can hear it on Friday. Wow. wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Been kicked out of the house. Jeez. Like and subscribe. Um, kicked right. out of the house and bank cards cancelled because she, she ran all of that. Oof. So I had to send them petrol money literally just a week ago. So, oh my God. Yeah. Okay, well, this is going to be a must listen. All right, dude. Cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs>